Hello, 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 welcome, welcome. It seems a bit dark in here today. I don't know what's going on. Seems a bit... Check me, check me lights. Zip, zip. Little twiddly knobs on the back of me lights. There you go. Yeah, it seems a little grim in here. I don't know what's quite going on. Anyway, let's stop fussing. Hey everyone, hello, welcome, 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 welcome. It is Sunday. It is time for Warhammer Sunday. I nearly said Warhamster. I can't say that. That's Chris's thing. Warhammer Sunday. It's time for that nonsense. Welcome, welcome, welcome. With me, Fox and Guthorm and Te Bane Blade. Bane Blade. Yes. So welcome, welcome, welcome. If you've not seen one of these before, it's basically me farting about building some Warhammer for three hours while you guys hang out and chat and have a jolly good time. That's kind of it, really. And I'll talk rubbish for three hours non-stop. And then, and then I won't build much. Uh, but very quickly, before we do anything else, let's get all the usual stuff out of the way. First and foremost, let me thank all the people that make my content possible. Let me also put on my jewellery because I forgot my bling. And you see, the thing is the bling is the thing. Yes, so first and foremost, to all my patrons and YouTube channel members, my patrons who support me at patreon.com forward slash model making guru. I forgot my rings. Uh, forward slash model making guru. A big thank you to them. They are my patrons. They support this channel uh, each month and they help pay the bills and keep the lights on and put food on my table, quite literally. A big, massive thank you to all of them and to my YouTube channel members who became members by simply pressing the join button that's under any one of my YouTube videos. Uh, they also support this channel directly and they also pay for all the bills, keep the lights on and keep food on the table. So big thank you to both those groups of people. They are all lovely and fluffy and I adore them and none of this would be possible without them. And also... To my corporate supporters, emodels.co.uk and goblingaming.co.uk. Links to both of those places in the description below the video. Those two retailers are basically your one-stop shop for all your model making and tabletop gaming needs. You don't need to go anywhere else for anything else. There you go. Make sure to use the links in the description below the video and it'll tell them that I sent you and I get some income from that. So big thank you to all of them. Now, if you've not seen one of these before, very, very, very quickly, you can see there's an archive of the live chat here. It's just started going when I hit the go button. Uh, if you are watching this and you can't see where the live chat is, you do need to watch on YouTube. So please do come and join in the live chat. It's a load of lovely people in there. I'll go through quickly who's in in a minute. A load of lovely folks in there. They're really awesome. You'll have a good time. It's really just about you guys hanging out and chat and have, meeting up with your friends. And that's kind of what it's all about. It doesn't really matter what I'm doing here. Although it is Baneblade, so it's completely relevant because Baneblade, basically. So do come and join the live chat. Uh, if you're watching it somewhere other than YouTube, just hit the YouTube icon that's in the bottom right hand corner of the video player near the play button and the pause button and the subtitles button and the settings button that should always be at least 1080p. Uh, and just click it down there and that'll take you to YouTube where you can watch and join in the live chat. So please do that. Now, I have to apologise um, because obviously, obviously I wasn't here on Friday and Saturday for the gaming live streams, my Fallout and Skyrim streams. And I haven't actually done any work this week at all. Various, I'm not going to go into it, but various real life personal stuff. I've just, I've not been at the bench at all this week i've not had a good week this week so i do apologize that i've not been around it's been a bit rubbish but i'm back now so yes so i shall quickly take the glasses of seeing away from guthorm and you can go back to look at you keep an eye on your chat for you we will be carrying on with the bane of blade if you remember last week uh i'll 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 have a look at chat in a minute and say hello to everyone. If, in fact, no, we'll do that first. Let's do that first before we get going. Quick shout outs for the people in chat. We have, are we on live chat or top chat? Pin, pinch to, pinch to squeeze to, come on iPad. Don't mess me around now. There we go. Thank you. Stick sometimes. Uh, we have, uh, I don't know if I've got the very first one, but Pascal's the first person I see. So Pascal Leverse and Scale Model Muse. Welcome to you too. Mayhem Model Works, who's quiet at work, so I can say hello. Uh, William Rayborn is in, and uh, Dad at Scaly Models, one of your lovely mods, is in. Welcome, Dad. Now, if you've been watching uh, Colin's stream a little earlier, because Colin and Dave do their stream at half 12 to half 2 on a Sunday, uh, uh, Sunday brunch. You, yeah, Dad and I, Scaly Models and I, kind of connived and, and what's the word? Not connived. We we got we got together and we kind of did a thing. We Colin, we we may have accidentally bought Colin and Bane Blade in the extra sprue. <clears throat> so Colin over at Festus Seven's Workshop now has a Bane Blade all of his own to play with, and now he knows how big it is. Yes. So you are more than welcome, Colin. So <laughs> what's the word? I'm not looking. I can't think of the word. It's not connived. It's not. We, we kind of schemed and 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 did underhanded things to make sure Colin didn't know what he was getting. Yeah. Super secret. 
Uh, who else do we have in? So Wendy Hickson's in. Hey, Wendy Hickson. Hi, Dad and everyone else. There's Wendy. Welcome. Uh, Anthony Lewis. Uh, who else have we got coming in? Muse has said already. Uh, we're saying hello. Vamp is in. So Vamp and Muse are in. Expect the biting to begin. Um, I'm sure there'll be snoot booping as well from other parties. Uh, Edward Leonard is in. Hello to all the people. Anthony Lewis. You've got one minute and 30 seconds. Oh, yeah. I was just before we went live. That's, I've... I've been doing my Microsoft reward points and I keep forgetting to do them. So I have to do them all online and then go on the Xbox and quickly do them to get me reward points so I can then get free Xbox Live because you know, money, I don't want to pay for Xbox Live if I can get it free. So I've been doing that every day. I keep forgetting to do it, but I've got back into doing it every day. So it's like you do little things on Bing and you do searches and stuff. You do some stuff on the Xbox. It takes like five minutes, but I forgot on a, yesterday. So I need to keep my streak going. So I had to do that quickly. So I was a bit distracted before the stream started. Not that you, I don't even know I'm telling you that. It's not even relevant to your interests. Uh, Muse is moving me to the bigger screen, which is correct because all the gloriousness requires massive screens. Um, we have who else have we got going on? Uh, Colin at Fest Six Sevens Workshop is in. Hey, Colin. <laughs> yeah, Soz. You, it's it's about that big, but then you've got all the stuff that goes on the front. Yeah, you, you, you know how big it is now. Welcome to the club. Uh, Mayhem says Fox Blade and Bigness, Glort and Blue dad uh, have a look i've been playing with sprue says colin oh yes it's hard to just just smell the quality go on smell it smell the quality oh yes uh js idaho is in hi fox and how is everyone welcome js idaho austric 90 betrillion says contrived that's a good word yeah we contrived we we still not quite the word i was looking for though Mm. You both conspired against me, says Festa. Oh, yeah. Always your fault, Vox, he says. Muse, yes. Uh, who else have we got? Have I missed anyone? I don't think so. Rare Queen was in. Ray's in. Hey, Ray from Malta. How you doing, my friend? Just my laptop, Fox, he says. Uh, says Muse. You've been converted finally, said lol, says Muse. Well, he hasn't built it yet. Uh, yeah, so he's got a Bane Blade. Now, one other update I've got is that the uh, the big coffee has returned. Yes. And I've forgotten how to make myself a big coffee. So I've got the balance of coffee and milk wrong. And that tastes a little bit, a little bit road surface, a little bit asphalt. I've not, I had it really down pat when I exactly how much coffee and how much milk to get. Because that's a litre, that holds a litre of coffee. And I've not done it for a while. Yeah, I've, I've, it's a bit strong that. Yes. Anyway, let's crack on. We're cracking on with the Bane Blade. Now, if you remember last time when we last met, I had uh, glued, I'd made the little plastic card or pla plate uh, end pieces for the barrels to cover up the big um, mould line that was running right down the middle, and I did both sets. Uh, now, this one has for some reason got a little bit of a, a bulbous bit in there. I don't know if you can see it there, but there's like a little bit of a it kind of goes bloop in the middle, but it doesn't really matter. I'm not really fussed. If you look at real barrels in real world, like, you know, fuel drums and stuff in the real world, they're kind of battered and dented, so I can live with that. And it might just be, it might be really subtle. I'm not actually sure once it's painted anyway. So uh, what I did do, though, was uh, last uh, last time or last time I had a chance to get to the bench off camera, I cleaned up the uh, the gap that was down the middle of the barrels. Remember, there was a big mold line going all the way down the, the front of the barrels. So I've... Do it this way it's easier i filled those in or rather i haven't filled them in i squeezed it together with the glue so the glue splooched out and i've just gently sanded them back uh, i sanded them back i used my scribing tool to rescribe some of the sort of raised ribbing on the barrel uh, just to make it a bit more because when you sand it down it softens it so just very gently scribing along the edges of it just makes it pop again and i added a little bit of greeble detail these little bits here got a bit scoff softened with the sanding. So what I've done is added a little tiny strip of plastic card and a little tiny rivet uh, on top of that just to make it some sort of little visual detail. It just, it just, they kind of got softened when I sanded and it, they faded away. So there's supposed to be something like a little clasp or something. So a bit of plastic card and a rivet doesn't really matter. It looks quite good. So we have completed now uh, one, not completed it, but there's pretty much most of it done. One of the track units. I need to start on the other one. So remember when you saw me build this in an entire episode, you were doing that again. Yeah, that's what we're doing here. Yeah. So we've got the, I've not glued the barrels on here yet because I don't want to glue those on 
and then suddenly find that I need them not on there to get this into the Trek unit. So we're just leaving them off for the moment. Looks a bit pale for Coffee Fox, he says Muse. It could just be my colour balancing. I say I'm not quite... I'm not quite familiar with the the, the coffee and milk balance because I've not done one of these for a while. So I sort of laid off the coffee for a bit um, for various reasons, but I'm back on the coffee now because I also didn't have time to make an enormous mug of water. So. Um, looks like, uh, where are we? My cup is about that size, says Muse. The big coffee is necessary. Uh, it looks a bit more like hot cocoa, not coffee, says Anthony Lewis. Yeah, it's, it's kind of right. I don't like black coffee. I don't like strong, dark coffee. I like coffee to be pleasant. I'm not really into the... I'm not like an American who can just pour just neat coffee into a cup and drink it. I don't understand how you guys do that. It's, it's just put milk in it. And I used to have sugar in my coffee, but I can't anymore. But I've got used to coffee without sugar now, so I'll live. Right, so uh, we have done thus. I need to mark that with the pen of... Ow! Pen of knocking the microphone. I've been deaf. Anybody listening on headphones has been deafened now. Sorry about that. Done that bit. Uh, done that bit. And I have done that bit so in advance. So today, uh, hopefully a bit faster than last time, uh, we will be assembling and gluing together the next tray unit. It's not exciting. Now what you need to do is get Dave one, says Mayhem. Yeah, it's a lot of money. Uh, I mean, my me, me dad and I kind of, uh, we, we, we clubbed together for the one for Colin. And that was a, a thank you gift from dad, really. But I, I was helping dad out with that. So it was more of a thank you gift. I'd love to buy everybody a Beyblade, but I'd also like to pay the bills. <laughs> yeah. Uh, right, so. Turkish coffee, a proper Italian one. Uh, none of that American shiz. Uh, that's not coffee. This is, um, and this is Diagostini then. It's not Diagostini coffee. It's Daragbert's gold. Uh, and I've got two enormous heaped spoonfuls of it. And then a, a double the normal amount of milk. But again, I've not, I've kind of forgotten the balance. So it's a little bit strong and also a little bit weak at the same time. Right, anyway, shut up. Right, we have the sprues. There we have. There will be many things to cut off sprues, but because I've done this once already, I, I should be good. So we're going to do the same as last time. We're going to go through and quickly get everything off the sprues. Uh, and I'm going to do limited clean up on these. If you remember when we did the tracks here, I didn't clean away the mold line that runs along the middle of all the tracks, individual track links, because there's like a top and a bottom half with the, the track pin in the middle. But I didn't clean that mold line off because it just makes it look like an upper and a lower half of the track. So for two reasons, one, it just looks like a, a natural edge between two pieces of the track. Imagine there's an upper piece and a lower piece like that, or a lower piece and upper piece, and there's a gap. But also, that's going to get covered in mud and dirt, so you're probably not going to see that anyway. So I do remember, of course, <clears throat> that I need something to put bits in. I do remember, of course, that this is really, for me, a test build. Because going forward into the future times, you know, once these dark times have passed, uh, <clears throat> going forward into the far future times, I don't know what parts I need now. I need, uh, yes. I need, what do I need? Oh, yes, those two. There we go. Uh, going forward into the far future times, of course, I'll be building and selling kits again, or models again, so... I'll probably end up doing a lot of Bane Blades in my future. So this is really just my first Bane Blade, and it's a test build. Just so I can figure out how the build goes, and I can, once I've got one done, I'll then understand how it goes together, and look at ways that I can, you know, streamline the process, and things like that. So, I'm not too fussed right now about making this beautiful. But it will be heavily weathered as well. And this is going to be um, my Death Core of Krieg Bane Blade. It will have a Death Core colour scheme, which I haven't quite decided yet. But it'll probably be German grey. Let's just be perfectly honest about it. Uh, we need to get all these other parts off while I'm here. Uh, I will require. Uh, R6, R8, and R7. 
What do you think? I have to put little lenses on now so I can see. Expensive test build, says somebody who I can't see. Uh, got my lenses on the wrong way. Uh, Muse, yes. Well, it's for myself anyway. So it's for my own, you know, Death Cora Krieg um, squad that I've still not got around to painting yet. And I probably never will. So it doesn't really matter because it's not going to get... It's not like I'm buying it purely to sell it. I'm buying it to make it for myself. So I can I can be I can have fun with it and go a bit silly with it. It may be that I eventually sell it, but I won't be, you know, too fussed if it's a bit shonky. But it just means then that when I come around to building them for real, R6, R7, and R8. Seven. When I come around to building them, if I'm building one purely to sell it, where I'll, I'll take a bit more time and effort with it. Than with my own personal builds, R6, R7, 6R, R3, R4, uh, what? R2, R1, that's R7, R6, there we go, R6 or 6R as they call it, okay, that'll do, I think, I hope, yes, so when I do like one, if I make one purely to sell it, then I take a lot more time with it. Uh, now I need the other part, which is not on this sprue, is it? It's on a different sprue. It is on... Not that sprue. This sprue. Both those. What part R8. Right there. So I can afford to, you know, a bit cavalier with this, because... It'll either be for my own personal gratification build, or if I do sell it eventually, I can sell it a bit cheap because I know I've not put as much effort into it as a for sale one. R1 and R2. This is, of course, all dependent on the dark before times passing and going back to future, bright future times when I can actually leave the house. That'd be nice. And I can do things like sell stuff. Anyway, enough about that. So yes, it's gonna. It's a, a, don't, don't worry if I'm being a bit slapdash with it. It's not the end of the world. It'll still look fantastic, trust me. He says, blowing his own trumpet vociferously. Now I do need my glass thing because we need to glue together these parts. So I shall have my little glass. Wheel. I must get a smaller one. I do recommend, uh, no matter what your workbench is. I do strongly recommend that at some point you get yourself, if not something like this is an old like cutting board, but it's a glass cutting board. But I do recommend you get yourself uh, a, a glass or a metal, well, glass is probably better, a glass plate of some sort that's at least A4 size, if not bigger. Because no matter how good your bench is, it's probably not 100% level. And when you're doing something that needs to be absolutely level, it's good to have a, a confirmed flat surface. I've got some schmutz on my lenses already. Let me just get that off. Hang on. Yeah, it's good to have a surface that you know for sure is flat. Because this bench isn't flat. It's 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 like a it's a folding table and it's just got a blimp in the middle. So yes, yeah, things roll around on this like like marbles on a table on a boat out at sea. I don't know where that imagery came from. Right there we go. Now I can see without a big schmutz right in the way. We need to clean these up. So, yeah, so I'm not going to go like crazy about cleaning off, for example, these nubs that are on the bottom wheels because A, they're covered by tracks. B, there's going to be a lot of mud and weathering probably at this point on the model. So that's fine. It's not the end of the world. So we'll just quickly work away these nubs. But it means that when I come to build future ones, of course, I know what to expect. I'm not flying blind. So I'll know, for example, <clears throat> there might be a particular nub and I can look at it and say, well, I don't even need to clean that up because you can't see it and it's not a contact surface. So it can just be left where it is. Because when you're buying stuff to sell, it's all about economies of scale. You don't have to do everything perfectly. Especially if it's going to be used on tabletop. So, 
if you know if I'm building something even to sell it you know a top quality paint job if there's a nub on a bit inside that nobody's ever going to see and it's not functional in any way I'm just gonna leave it I've got my own bills so. because that way it's more economical anyway how is everyone it's been a week since I've seen you well since last Monday I suppose how is everyone I hope you're all well Hope you're all doing okay. As always, the most important question that you can ever ask on any kind of live stream is, of course, bench and belly. Uh, what's on your bench? What you're working on right now? And what's in your belly or what will be in your belly later on? What are you planning for your dinner or what have you had for your dinner? What are your culinary nomulatory plans for the day? On my bench, obviously, is the bay and blade. Bay and blade and gefarten. Uh, and for noms later on, I have. But we've started, or I've started a thing in this house, and both Mama Fox and I really love it. It's a thing called Fox's Mess, which I've explained it before, but in case you've never heard me talk about it, Fox's Mess is quite simple. You take some brown rice, two cups of brown rice. You take, um, say, seven to ten new potatoes with skins. You take maybe two or three normal sized carrots or a handful of small sized multicolored carrots, which is what we have today. They're all like purples and yellows and oranges and everything. Uh, you take one or maybe even preferably two red onions that are onions and red. And you then take a meat product of some sort. Any meat product you like. If you're a vegetarian, obviously not a meat product, a meat substitute, but. Ideally, it'll be a meat product. Uh, and what you do is basically get a big pan. Right, you get this massive, great, dirty, great big pan. I've got one that I call family size, which is like about 10 litres or something. It's a pain in the arse to empty out, but it's a great pan. You get your water boiling in that and you add in the carrots for about two or three minutes. Slice up the carrots into slices, obviously. Put that in for about two or three minutes. Oh, yeah. the smell of carrots is fantastic. A sprinkle of salt in there as well and you give that about three up to five minutes in the mask because carrots get carrots you don't want the carrots to be too crunchy and if you put them in the same time as everything else you, they'll be too crunchy give the carrots a few minutes uh, then what you do is you take your you chop up your potatoes into nice thick slices like two or three slices per potato you chop up your onion into little pieces dice it up nicely um you take your i forgot to mention cabbage you get a whole mess of cabbage white cabbage and you chop that up into small pieces and you take your you take that and you dump that into the pan with the carrots and that takes 20 minutes just boil it just boil it for 20 minutes you also take your brown rice and for the brown rice you rinse it out you put it into i've got a microwave rice cooker uh, but if you haven't basically it's, it's the same amount of time you basically boil it for well if you're boiling it in a pan boil it for 20 minutes then let it sit for 10 minutes using a rice cooker like i am in my microwave i just put it in the rice cooker and turn the microwave on for 30 minutes then you also prepare your meat based products it can be whatever you want doesn't really matter uh, and then when it's all done and dusted what you do is you combine it all you, you, you drain out the big giant pan that's got all the potatoes and stuff in it you drain it out so it's just got the potatoes and stuff in it you add the rice to the big giant pan then you add your meat product to the big giant pan now if it's for example something like chicken or beef you want to cut it up into cute you want to you know dice it and cube it cut it up into strips or however you want to do it into small pieces if it's uh you know bacon you want to chop it up into little pieces you basically want to get the meat and chop it up into bits because you're going to mix it in that goes into the big pan am i going to see that little I'm not going to see that, am I? No, it goes between the two wheels and you can't see it. So I don't really care if there's a mold line on that. See, this is what I'm talking about, economies of scale, you see. I've got the sniffles again today, so I do apologise. Uh, you then, so you've got everything in the pan. Everything's chopped up and mixed up. You add the rice to the big family pan as well. All happiness at this point. And then you add... A significant amount of butter, although I would strongly recommend instead of butter, you use, uh, you know, something like sunflower oil type spread. That kind of because it's much more healthy. I can't do thick, stodgy butter, but I can do like sunflower spreads and stuff. If you want to do pure butter, you can do. If you want to really kill your arteries and use proper ghee, 
Jesus. You can do that. Whatever floats your boat, but some butter or butter substitute, not margarine, because A, you can't get it in the UK anyway. But B, it's also really bad for you. So yeah. And I mean, and get, your, get your knife and just go thump, a big blob of it that big and just splomb it in the pan. Do two of them. You want lots and lots of butter or butter substitute. Lots of that. Getting hungry now. Uh, you add in a significant amount of proper dark soy sauce. Kiko Man is the best, uh, but other dark soy sauce will do. Do not, do not even think about using light soy sauce. Use light soy sauce, I will find you and I will just slap you about the face with a fish. Because light soy sauce is garbage. You don't want to use that ever. Not ever. Nonsense. It's just a bottle full of liquid salt. You don't want that. The dark soy sauce. Uh, I like to add the tiniest amount of fish sauce, the really stinky Vietnamese stuff that I can never remember the name of. It's just called fish sauce on the bottle. Uh, that's not quite smooth enough. I also like to add a significant uh, amount of mayonnaise, proper full fat Hellman's mayonnaise. And the squeezy bottle is easier, but you can do it from the jar if you want. Proper full fat Hellman's mayonnaise, none of this light nonsense. I also have, uh, and if you've got any like sweet chili, you can add some sweet chili sauce. I have some hamburger dressing that's basically Big Mac's, the, the pink Big Mac sauce in a bottle. That's really nice. Put some of that in as well. Add a significant amount of paprika. Uh, if you've got cumin, depending on the meat you've put in there, if you've got some cumin, you can put cumin in there as well. Or whatever herbs you want to add to your taste. And then you just get your big ladle and you smush it all around and you mix it all in. Now, because you put lots of butter in there, or butter substitute, it makes this nice sticky mess. And it's all like, oh, and my mouth is just, my mouth is like the Hoover Dam just broke right now. Uh, so that is Fox's mess. But the important bit is um, that you can swap out any meat you want. Or non-meat even. Where I've done it with uh, chopped up diced up steaks i've done it with diced up or chopped up sausages i've done it with hot dogs that you just get a hot dog and you chop up into and cook them first and chop them up and dump them in uh, or if you want to you can just put them in for the last five or six minutes of the vegetables boiling that's the other way you can do it i've done it with chicken lots and lots of chicken i've done it with turkey uh, i've not done it with lamb because I've never, I've never cooked lamb i don't understand lamb i love lamb i just don't understand it um why have I not got 600? Where's my 600 grit? I don't need a 600 grit, but when I want it, I feel I need it. But always, the trick is just to make sure that the meat is uh, chopped up. If you wanted to get really, really stodgy, if you wanted to get really lump and, and thick and stodgy, because it's basically a big bowl of stodge, is what you're looking at. Healthy. It's actually healthy because it's basically potatoes and cabbage and onions and with a little bit of and make sure make sure the meat if you're on a health kick the reason I can do this for myself because I'm on spoken a low fat diet is uh, I have to make sure the meat's lean so uh, I make sure I use lean meat so you can do it with lean meat I'm, I'm I have to use I use the Morrison's lean meat box this channel is not sponsored nor endorsed by Morrison's I just like their meat box um you can do it with lean meat. Anything you want, really. If you if you're not a meat eater, you could do it with. There's probably tons of things you could you could swap out. Uh, the, tonight, though, we have uh, from the Morrison's uh, meat box, the lean meat box. We have a couple of packs because of the last couple of boxes we've ordered. A couple of packs of their meatballs, which I think is twelve in a pack. Uh, I'm going to be using those, but I'm actually going to just smush them up into basically mince because Mama Fox wasn't really keen on them as meatballs. And you do tend to get like a bowl of mess with like two meatballs in it, which is a bit rubbish. So I'm just going to smash them up into basically mince, which is fine. So that's the plan for tonight. Fox's mess and smushed up meatballs. That's the, this is the way to do things. Now you're all really, really hungry. I, I, I'm going to guess you're all starving right now. You're all like, Fox, I'm starving now. And I'm at work for the next six hours. Thanks. Yeah, you, you're welcome plan for tonight now i'm a lay I, I don't do cooking i'm rubbish at cooking I'm, I'm lazy i would much rather put something in the microwave and warm it up for five minutes but the fact with these is the, the work is really just chopping everything up that's the most work i need to do so i quite like making fox's mess because it's just slam it in a pan and there you go don't have to think about it i might have to you know fry or cook the meat that's a bit of a pain but yeah, it's all right 
the frying pan out, get the meat on the go. But nicely done. Just check that against the light. It's looking nice and smooth. Okay, want that one again. So that's the plan for tonight. Do, do, do. I did a slow cook the other day, which was just chicken and veggies and stuff. But unfortunately, the downside of doing a slow cook is three days after you've done the slow cook, you remember you've got a slow cooker with all the leftover food in it. And you're like, oh, that's going to smell like ass. Oh, yeah, I've got that to clean out. Downside. Slow cooking. Uh, Chris at Chris Models is in. Says, hey, all. Hey, welcome, Chris. Oh, I see a stabity looming. No, I've not done a stabity for ages. You know, I need to wipe my nose because I've got the snifflies. Apologies. Uh, one second. Uh, uh, wiping. Yeah, uh, yeah. There we go. Uh, what am I missing in chat? At least Games Workshop is among the few companies that can do instruction manuals properly. I eat info on them. Yeah, for the most part. Uh, I wouldn't say 100%. 99.9%. Sometimes they give you stuff where you can't quite see the way things are supposed to be oriented. It's not quite clear. Uh, sometimes, as in the case of this kit, parts aren't even numbered. Some of the parts are just not even numbered. But thankfully, they're all kind of unique. But, you know, it can cause irish. But, the, you know, they're not, not that bad. Uh, the glass board of glass cutting, formerly called Mama Foxes. Yeah, this was, uh, this was a, um, a Mother's Pride cutting board with all the flower men on it. The, the dudes with the bowler hats and stuff and that kind of all peeled away it got borrowed when i did my eagle transporter and when i was saying about getting yourself a glass a glass or confirmed solid and flat not flexible work surface like a piece of metal or something because the metal is still flexible this was absolutely vital when i was doing the eagle transporter to get the the spine of the the body straight because if i do it on this desk which is like that it's garbage uh, where are up to? Nubth, says Mayhem. Uh, by the way, Colin, you know, on my message when you got my little extras pack of stuff, the, f the phrase was Sponsons, because it's a Sponsons pack. Sponsons. I can't remember who started. I think it was Paul that started that. Sponsons. Uh, Reset RJC Models is in. Hello, Fox. Hello, buddy. How you doing, mate? Uh, has anyone ever cut something off a sprue and then realise that you've cut off the part in the wrong spot and have to patch it together? once or twice it often happens with small bandai parts sometimes but they do tend to the problem with well sometimes it happens with non-bandai kits and that's just because they didn't tell you anything in the instructions with bandai kits it's often because you've not paid attention because in the in the instructions it often actually highlights bits that they think you might cut off thinking it's part of the sprue and they are quite good like that uh, but yes i've done it myself uh margarine's grow says muse it's actually illegal in this country you can't get it You've not had it here for like 20 years i think they banned it because it was made of death and chemicals uh, on the bench is the venom crawler and for tea later home baked wedges and sausages says eon's car welcome eon's car oh yeah wedges um sean lloyd says nook ma'am i don't know what that means nook ma'am welcome sean uh, always butter says muse yes i would love to have always butter uh, but i'm supposed to be on a get my cholesterol down so i can't really sit there i mean trust me when i get like a scoop of butter for my for vox's mess it's like you get your knife and you're like and it's like that big and you want splat in the pan and you might do two of those so if you're doing proper butter you'd probably actually die pink mac sauce is literally thousand island dressing relish and paprika literally yeah i know but i don't know what this stuff in the in the bottle i've got is it's just a sauce it just reminds me of it. it's not exactly big mac sauce but it tastes a bit like it uh candy gram is in greetings everyone welcome candy gram fox what sanding sticks are those asks anthony these are the i've got one where you can actually see it These are the Infini I N F I N I I N no I N F I N I yeah I couldn't read it then Infini uh, six sticks I don't know if you can get them in the UK they were sent to me by a very good friend Kenneth who is in Australia they're made by Electrostatic Induction that's not the company name that's how they're made they're the Infini sanding sticks uh, he sent them to me uh, and he lives in Australia 
Uh, so I don't know if you can get. You probably can. I think I've seen these in other people's videos. But uh, Infinity sticks. I've also got a load of the uh, Ultimate Modeling Products sticks from uh, UMPRetail.com or from eModels.co.uk. I'm not using them because I, I need big wide sticks for this for this job so these are just faster uh... space hamsters in welcome space hamster margarine should be illegal it actually is literally illegal in the uk do 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 i had to watch chris and paul's oh sorry can do says i watched i'll start that again hang on big big swig of coffee hang on this coffee is so big and heavy that I have to hold it like that. It's the best way to hold that mug. Um, I watched Chris and Paul's play of Raft yesterday on Team Inept's channel. Yes, we do have a, a video game channel. Hashtag Team Inept. It's youtube.com slash Team Inept, uh, where we do our gaming stuff. Uh, I'm hoping to do my gaming stuff on that eventually, once it'll be able to get it monetized. But we need a billion more views. So we need about 3,000 hours of views. So please go and watch all the videos like 20 times. Eight. No, don't go and do that. I can't ask you to do that. YouTube would hate me. But please go and watch at least 400 hours of content on that channel. I watched Chris and Paul's play of Raft yesterday on Team Up's channel. I had to put my X-Acto knife down because I was laughing so hard. I missed that, sadly. Uh, good thing I'm not in the UK. There you go. Amazon has them. Cool. You probably, I mean, yeah, anything you can't get in your country of choice, go on Amazon. Infini. Uh, it says Infini model 0 slash 0 slash 2 slash 2 IPP. That's all I know. But I like them because they've also got the grit on the stick, which is great. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You're a nook mum, says Anthony Lewis. I don't know what that means. I don't know any of these things. Um, ooh. Plastic Monkey has put a super chat through. Thank you very much for that Plastic Monkey. He says, buy an extra bottle of soy sauce. Oh, so nice. Technically, it's soy sauce, not soya sauce. But I think it's just become accepted now as soy sauce. But yes, oh, proper. You, if you're going to have soy sauce, it's got to be proper dark, dark soy sauce. Thank you very much for that, uh, Plastic Monkey. You're very, very kind of you. There you go. There's a little animation. Now, don't forget, of course, if you are in the chat and you're watching, I do have um, the chair in front of me, as you can see. But when I've got my lenses down, I can't see shears through that. All that's blurred. So if you want to catch my attention, please do you put your comments in capital letters if it's specifically for my attention. Or you can at Model Making Guru in it, a little, a little orange thing on it. Uh, oh, Nook Mam, that fish sauce says, and, oh, right, sorry, I do apologize. Yes, Nook Mam, that's it. Anthony Lewis and Sean said the fish sauce is called Nook Mam. Yeah, I couldn't remember the name. It's dead now. Smells like I'm not gonna tell you what it smells like, not on this show because I want to stay monetized. But and please don't put it in chat. But yes, it smells, mm, yeah. but as long as you use a tiny amount, it, it really enhances the flavor. The Romans knew what they were doing when they used to put fish sauce in everything. Uh, yes, fish sauce. No, come on, thank you very much. Uh, yes, so if you want to get my attention, please put your comments in big fat capital letters so I have a chance to see them through the lenses of doom. Uh, if you want to, though, you can do like Plastic Monkey just did and do a super chat. And to do that, you just press the little dollar symbol that's at the bottom of the chat window, that little button. Uh, you can do a super chat and that puts your comment in a colored box and it does that little animation that you saw in the corner up there. Uh, so there's no way I can miss a super chat. I'd have to be like clinically brain dead to miss a super chat. But while you're doing a super chat, of course, you're also supporting this channel directly. And I do thank you for it. It all pays the bills. So massive, massive thank you. Very kind of you. Very kind. Anyway, yes, hope you're all well. Uh, what's been going on in my life? Well, nothing I can really tell you about this week. Nothing that I want to tell you about this week anyway. Uh, just lots of personal stuff. I've just not had time at the bench at all. All kinds of things happening this week. Real life stuff. Uh, which means I've just been nowhere near the bench. I've done nothing virtually at all constructive or useful i hate when that happens so always when you get them you know like the real frustrating thing is i'm, I'm behind on the tabletop trauma center looming Russ, i need to get that done and i've said before you know I'm, I'm very fickle sometimes i just i either have the urge to do something or it just leaves me completely and there's no point doing anything um for various reasons and you know, it's, it's it's one of those things that I've learned over the years. 
you don't fight it. You don't. You don't. If I if I if I've not got the urge to work, I can't fight it. There's no point. You can't fight depression. That's just how it works. So I just have to go with the flow. That's not what's been going on this week, but you know, I just just got my urge to work. I'm like, yeah, right. Let's get to the bench and let's do all this. And then various things happen this week. I'm like, oh yeah, bugger. So just when I had the urge to work and events conspired to take me away from the bench, I'm like, you swine. So I've got lots of work to do this week coming up. Lots of Lehman Russ. I need to get the Lehman Russ finished because once I've done that, I need to do that uh, Waz Bomb Daka Jet thing for Goblin Gaming. And when I've done that, I'm then free to paint whatever I want, which might be another Waz Bomb Daka Jet for you guys. I don't know yet. Or it could be something else. So we shall see. Right. Knife away. Clean off the mat. Let's get to the gluing. Uh, I suspect that there might have been a reason behind the quite obvious lack of international assisted raft. E oh, talking about the raft thing. I've not watched it yet. Uh, Belly mince pie and hot chocolate bench. Top secret boxes, says Wendy Hickson. Ooh, I like secret boxes. Uh, Muse says YouTube is acting up. Hear that? Scale model Muse waves. Uh, also says it's fishy. A proper garum. Garum, that's the word I was looking for. Yeah, garum. Garum was the, was the Roman... Romans used to put garum or fish sauce in it in all in everything, even their desserts. The two major exports from Rome to the rest of the empire uh, were, well, apart from obviously like you know soldiers and oppression, <laughs> apart from rampant oppression, uh, their two major exports uh, were olive oil and garum. They used to put fish oil on everything. Uh, and people are often remind. I've watched programs about like you know. Uh, Russian, Russian, Roman cuisine and how different it was. And people are often surprised at exactly, literally, how different it actually is. Like the f the flavorings and the, the way it works is so alien to what we know. Like putting like garum on desserts, you'd be like, what? What are you talking about, Willis? But they did. That's what they did. That's what they were all about. It was a way to because their you know their palates were different in them days based on what foods they could actually get. I just said in them days, didn't I? I'm very northern. They had a different palette in them days when I was a lad. When Ted was a lad in ancient home. Oh. Right now I need to make sure this is flat. So move the glue out of the way. This is where this gets tricky now. Got myself a straight edge. As my old metalwork and woodwork teacher would call it, just before throwing a chair at some child who wouldn't shut up. Yeah, we had a, our woodwork and metalwork teachers at secondary school. They were proper, like, northern. Like, they were made of... they were Their physical bodies were made of dark satanic mills. And coal. And, like, you know... Pit workers. and They were the kind of old school... Yorkshiremen who would teach you, by God, they would teach you how to use a hammer and anvil or how to use the forge or how to make something out of wood. And if you didn't listen or you weren't paying attention, they would just throw a desk at you. I mean, there's proper old school woodwork and metalwork teachers. And I've got to tell you, I've got to tell you, when I was at school, we actually had in metalwork class, we had an, a, a forge. It included the metal, the metalwork, there was a woodwork shop and a metal workshop and the metal workshop included a whole ass forge <gasps> so i've done the t t i've done the, i've made i've made you know my elven my dwarven armor and my my glass cuirass i haven't really but i've done i've done forging with the hammer and the anvil and the thing i made a ball peen hammer i think uh but that wasn't forging i did make a, a, a an iron a wrought iron garden decoration and it was amazing you take your bit of iron and you smack it with hammer when it gets hot and then you twist it. Oh, it was. I didn't know. Well, I think back on it now. It's like kids today. I sound like I'm really old and I am. But it's like thinking back on it now. It's like part of my education. And one of the bits I actually enjoyed was to go in. You think it was a it was a modern for the time 1980s secondary school that had an entire blacksmith's forge in it. I'm pretty sure most schools don't have that nowadays. Most kids nowadays, they go to school and they just learn things on computers. And there you go. You've learned it now with your brain. Yeah. Actually, proper. Cameron Anvil. 
Muse says, a proper shop teacher. Yeah, I mean, they really were. They were like proper northern Yorkshiremen. And all they cared about was that you listened to what they said. And if you didn't, God help you. Dear Lord, God help you. Because this was the 1980s. And they, I'd, I've seen them th literally throw a chair at a boy for not shutting up. You did not. I'm sure they were like really soft, gentle old blokes to other people. But to the, to the boys, they were like... It was great. It was great times. Right. Uh, Mayhem says, would it not have been as beneficial to assemble the inside and outside of the track assembly before joining them together? Uh, this is the inside part. That you will never see that bit. That's the inside. That's the interior. That's the bit that goes on the side of the tank. So you're not going to see that bit. This is the bit that will go on the side here. And then you put the track around it, but you have to add the two, uh, what they call the spooling wheel and the dribbly wheel or whatever they are, the wheel at the back and the wheel at the front. Um, you have to add them in as well. So I actually give them credit that the order of build they put in the instructions for these is actually spot on, mostly. But you need to be able to make sure that these are lined up. And if you try to line these up, because you've got pieces that go across here like that, you see. So it's not, not quite as straightforward. Because this bit here is basically that bit there. That goes on the side of the tank. Like that. So you never see that. Never see that bit. I know what you mean. Uh, but yeah, it does actually work this way. So we've got that bit. We need to do some assemblage. So I need R6, R7 and R8. So there's our two, our six, our seven. I may have a burp coming up. I can sense it. My spidey senses are telling me I'm going to be doing burpage. So our six is, thankfully these are numbered because they really don't want you to mess these up. So they are R6 or six R as it says on there. Is there? Uh, there's a non-circular hole there, and it needs the sh the long piece in R6, like a D-shaped hole and a D-shaped pin. So you... Now I did say at one point you can't mess this up, but on one of the wheels, on the other one, it didn't quite lock in place, and it was wibbly wobbly, and it wasn't great. So I'm hoping I don't have the same problem on this one. That one there is locked in. That just means that all those little teeth there are locked in place because that's where tracks go in. I can quite comfortably, quite happily and quite comfortably glue that in place. I'm not worrying about being nice and tidy because the interior bit is going to be covered by tracks. I just need to get it stuck in. Get stuck in, lad. There we go. There we go. Lovely. Uh, I need to do R1 and R2. I need to do R white because I'm a secret lemonade drink. Sorry. Up. Shh, copyright. Shh. I also need R3 and R5 and R4. Okay, let's get the little bit of wheels off. Somebody remind me, because I don't know tanky things. What are the wheels called? The one at the back and the one at the front. I know the, is the one at the front is the idler wheel, isn't it? Because that just that just spins freely as the track moves across it, I think. So that is the front one the idler wheel and the back one is the one that the engine's connected to and that's the something on the wheel. Is that the traction wheel? Somebody tell me. But I think the front one is the idler wheel. So that is, I think, the idler wheel no that's the that's the one at the back this one is going to be the, the, uh, the back front shut up what shut up right so i need those wheels gentlemen bring me your wheels i shall also get the wheels off sprocket <laughs> same to you hello thank you yes sprocket at the back is it the idler wheel at the front so is the engine connected to the, the road wheels or the idler or the sprocket i guess it's the sprocket at the back I don't really know tanks, as you can obviously tell. I know there's a, it's a big box with, you know, metal, metal boxes. Big box with shooty bit on the front and dudes inside. And in the case of the Bane Blade, there's probably one or more servitors in there, which are people with all their consciousness removed, and they're turned into just automatons. Hey, Grimdark is as Grimdark does. Uh, I need three and four, which is these two. Three, four, and five. What's it talking about? I've already forgotten. Three, four, 
I need to clean those up as well, but we can clean those up in a bit. Put the detail on that back panel there. Look at me back panel, look at that. It's beautiful. Oh, I'm so looking forward to painting all these bits of light. There's some uh, skulls and there's fretwork and there's filigree and there's, um, what do you call it? The, the, uh, my brain's blanked on them. The things with the, the purity seals, that's it. You know, brain at the minute, remembering some words is proving difficult. All that beautiful detail on there. So looking forward to painting all that filigree and stuff. Front one is called the round wheel, and the um, the one at the back is called the spinny thingy, says Quano Man. Anthony Lewis says, drive and idle, and then looks up parts of tank. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Mayhem says something. Well, uh, he doesn't get what I mean. Assemble the inside and outside of the tracks and before drive. Oh, you mean? Okay, you mean build this bit and then build the other piece. And then, uh, yeah, I probably will do. I mean, you do, because you don't, you mean, because all you do is you build the side, you stick the two idler and sprocket wheels on, and then you stick the other side on, and then you attach the tracks and the wheels. I think, is that what you mean? Build that piece and then be, build the opposite counterpart piece. I think, yeah, that's what I'm going to do anyway, so. Uh, I think, I think I know what you mean. I'm just, I'm just doing now. What? My brain's all over the place today. I do misunderstand what you're saying. I do apologise, but you have to understand that I am an idiot. I'm a very, very little brain. Okay, so the front is a smaller sprocket, which the drive sprocket. The other round bits are called road wheels. Scale model vamp says pinion thingy. That's the irony on this on this kit. The way they've done the kit, that the actual wheels at the back don't have the teeth on them. If you look at a proper tank, it has teeth on the wheels to catch, because they catch in the edge of the tracks and they feed it round. Because that's the idea. It's the, the sprocket wheel. It's got the sprocket. So these are these are just round. It wouldn't actually work, I don't think. If this was a real tank. Oops, locking the camera. I'll probably come back you. See what I mean about this? If you just, it's not going to move now, is it? Look, I told you that this, this desk is not straight. It maybe is there, but as soon as you move it about here, it's gone. I'm off. Bye. Yeah, I mean, this 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 glass plate will be, will be straight. It won't be bendy or curvy, but the desk itself is in about five different directions. Yeah. My belly also makes lots of noises right now, so I do apologise if you're hearing strange organic gurgling noises. I had to talk about Fox's mess and now my belly's like, I want that now, in my f can you put it in the face, please? Please, I want the Fox's mess in the face. Thank you very much. Is it six o'clock yet? There you go. Anyway. Just see if this is working. Get on. Yes, Ted appears to be working fine. I haven't heard from Ted uh, about his broadband. Uh, if you remember last Monday's live show for eModels, all went a bit to pot because Ted's broadband fell over. I'm assuming it still fell over. So I don't know if we'll have Ted with us tomorrow night. I'm suspecting probably not. Uh, but tonight, is, don't forget tonight, of course, 8pm uh, tonight is Chris doing his Warhamster Sunday. I don't know if it was supposed to be Ted. I think it was Chris's week anyway. Uh, but obviously Ted can't do anything like that right at the moment with his internet broken. So uh, Chris will be along with his Warhamster Sunday t uh, tonight. And I believe he's starting the painting on his uh, Matalan Fridge Raider. If you don't live in the UK, that joke won't mean anything to you. You won't know what a Fridge Raider is and you won't know what Matalan is. So it's a very UK joke. That. I do apologise. Google is your friend. Matalan is a chain of crappy cheap shops. Fridge raiders are like, you get these little packets of bits of chicken that are just things you put in the fridge to nibble on. But the vehicle is the Atalan Ridge Runner. Ridge Racer! The old gaming joke there as well. 
I'm a I'm a whole mess of like references that nobody will ever get. I'm made of references that nobody will get. Uh, Mayhem says, I've heard from a lot of people in the last week that their Sky Broadband fell over in spectacular failure fashion. <laughs> sky in it? What do you expect? Like, my broadband doesn't work. Who are you with? Sky. Well, there's your problem right there. That's £500, please. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, Ted's was getting like, Ted was getting literally like, if he was getting a connection at all, it was like a megabit. It was like a meg connection. So, yeah, that's, that's not, that's not correct. Even on Sky, you're going to get more than a meg. So, yes. So, what are we going to talk about? I have some things to talk about. Don't forget, of course, if you're watching this and you're not in the live chat, many people are watching right now. Uh, wow, for 38 people watching. If you are watching this and you're not in the live chat, please do come and join the live chat. Just click the little YouTube icon in the bottom right of the video player and that will take to the YouTube page where you can continue watching and also have the chat open and you can join in. You don't have to. I know some people don't like to do that, but it's it's a good safe. It is a safe and fun environment. You'll have a good time. Come and join in. Uh, but if you are in chat, uh, remember, I try and find things to talk about on this programs, but I usually fail. Because sometimes it's boring just talking about whatever I'm doing, you know, because often with these streams, I'll talk about the things I'm doing. Now I'm gluing this. Now I'm attaching this. But when it's stuff like this, I don't need to explain how to clean up a piece of plastic. So give me stuff to talk about. Ask me questions in chat. Ask me anything. All my chats are always ask me anything. No religion and no politics, but most of the stuff is fair game. I'll answer anything if I can. And if I can't, I'll tell you I can't. Or maybe I'll just make up an answer. If I give you the answer to something that's Wales, then it probably means I, I don't know what the actual answer is. Because, yeah. My go-to answer is it's probably at least the size of Wales. Doesn't always work. What is a mushroom? Well, it's probably at least the size of Wales. Really? Yes. In my mind. Mind is very strange. Right, so we have these bits now. So I need two. Attached together R1, R2, and R wide. I'm a secret lemonade drinker. This show is neither sponsored nor endorsed nor affiliated with R White's lemonade drinking company people things. Uh, that goes there, that goes like that to see. I do apologize if I'm doing stuff off camera. It's hard to know exactly where you guys can see and where you can't. And I, we all do the same thing. We all are kind of going back towards ourselves when we work. It can be quite frustrating when you're doing a live stream and people can't see anything. Yeah, so ask me questions, folks. If you do ask me a question, just remember to put your, your question in capital letters or do at, just at me in the chat. Uh, or if you want to, you can do a super chat. Always an option, but not obligatory obligatory even now we're going to give this a second and we're going to not touch that bit we're going to squeeze squeeze out that bead of glue so that we can sand that back in a bit and make it nice and smooth the beauty of this thing the kind of this kind of scale and to a certain degree for 135th scale kits and tanks if you have two parts that you need to glue together, but you want to make sure there's no obvious line, and you do the method whereby you put some glue between them and like extra thin, and then you squeeze them together, a little bead of glue comes out. Sometimes, if you're lucky, that little bead of glue can look just like a weld seam. Now, on a 135th scale, or even this kind of heroic scale tank, it would probably actually, you'd probably actually get away with it by just making it out to be like a welding seam. Because if you look at some really good 135th tanks and armor, they have visible welding seams molded into them. So, I mean, I'm going to, I'll sand it back and clean it up, but you could get away with that as a weld seam. If it made sense to have a seam there. So we've got R3. 
like that. There we have R5. Again, it's a D-shaped peg and a D-shaped hole. Now, this is where we came unstuck last time because this peg did not lock into the hole. Ah, that's better. I oh, know this one did go together fine. It's this, uh, that peg did not lock into that hole because somehow I managed to get glue on. I think I've got glue on here again. I don't quite know how. I think I must have somehow managed to get glue on here and by handling it, I've smudged it and I've softened the shape of it. And then when it came to put it together, it didn't quite lock in. So the wheel was kind of spinning round, and that's why I had trouble with that last track. This one, I think, hopefully will be a bit better. So this can now be glued together. You need to be careful not to put too much glue on that end because I don't want to get it too moist. I need that to keep its D shape basically. It needs to lock in place into the the mounting. And if I get that covered in glue, I think what I did in that last one was I got glue on that little nub, I got glue on that socket, and then when I tried to put them together, of course, you got soft plastic. The soft plastic it just kind of smushed, and the D-shaped key and lock, or lock and key, it just became a circle, and that's why it was loose, and that's why I had so much trouble. Give that a minute. Uh... Uh, Mayhem says, the missus sent me an Elder Scrolls cookbook, all the foods from Skyrim. Yes. Yes, you need to make all of them. You need to send me a lot of sweet rolls as well. J.S. Hido says, what are fridge raiders? They're basically, um, imagine a chicken strip in breadcrumbs, but it's cold and it's in a packet and you put it in the fridge. And it's not like crunchy breadcrumbs. It's like kind of like, almost like in a uh, sort of soft bread kind of batter type stuff. I don't really know, but they're little strips of usually flavoured chicken, like with Creole sauce or something on, you know, a little, little vacuum pack. You put it in the fridge. When you get the munch, you go in the fridge, open it up, nom, 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 and you eat it. It's like a little, little pack of, say, 10 or 15 little strips of chicken. I think they do other things as well, but I've only ever seen the chicken. They're just thinking, you go and raid the fridge, you see, like, you get the munches, you go and raid the fridge. Uh, B3 says, I am here, but not here. The boss has me wrapping presents. <laughs> You don't need to wrap my presents, just send them to me in the original box. Hello, Mama Fox. Hello. Uh, processed chicken bites, usually flavoured in roast, Chinese or barbecue flavour, says May. Yes. Uh, there's one for Fallout as well, the cookbook. Yes, you need to make basically that bowl of stew that you see in the cooking stations in Fallout 4 and then take a photograph for the boom hut. Uh, and then I need to look at it for a significant amount of time and have food thoughts. Uh, don't forget, of course, talking to the Boom Hut, if you aren't a member already, uh, I do have a Facebook group called the Model Makers Boom Hut on Facebook, funnily enough. It's a super safe, uh, relaxed, chilled out place for people to post their work uh, and show it off in a safe environment where there's no bitching and no snarking and there's no nastiness like that. We don't allow it. So if you're not already a member, uh, do come and join the Model Makers Boom Hut. I'll put it in chat there for you. Hopefully that'll come out in chat. Uh, yep. Do come and join. Uh, it's a real safe environment. And it's for people of all skill levels. I don't think I'm going to enjoy Fallout food, says Chris. Yeah, because of the radiation. Rad Roach on toast. I'll vote for that. Uh, the World of Warcraft cookbook is just as good. Crane fly on a stick. Oh, yes. Oh, don't make me think about such things. Mayhem model works. Deep fried plain strider or stewed murloc. Oh, yeah. What is it that the um, planes don't they call? Isn't that what Argonians call humans? Plane strides? No, plane walk. What do they call them? Landstrider. Greetings, Landstrider. I can't do an Argonian voice. Not like a, a Skyrim Argonian voice. Which is a beautiful voice. The guy that does the Argonians, or one of them, and one of the guys that does the Khajiit, those two voice actors have just the best voice in the world shut up if you disagree with me i'm not listening right, right, so i need to keep them two separate because that is the front wheel double check that's six and seven so that six and seven goes at that end right so i'm going to keep that there i'm going to put that wheel there and put these two there i don't want to get them mixed up don't want to make a mess of this uh, right, so we now need to do the other side, the other bits of plating. 
So of course the pretty plating, the pretty pretty plating. A pretty pretty plating. Got these screws out, they're sliding. Hang on. I'm having some issues here. Hang on. Hey Colin, if you're still watching, if you want to know how big some of the parts are for this Bane blade, look at that piece of hull armor there. Yeah. That's the bit the turret goes on top of. Yeah. That's the glasses plate on the front. Gun. And that's... Yeah. Just so you know. Just thought you'd like to see that, maybe with your eyes, of looking. Uh, like that. There we go. So, let us remove these parts from the sprue. After a quick look at my Lurk Sushi. Oh, yeah. Oh. We're saying hello to Mum Fox. Landstrider. Yeah, go into, go into Riften and talk to the guy. Is it Jari? No, it's not Jari Ra. Jari Ra is the one that wants, wants you to do the lighthouse. Speak to the guy that sells the jewellery in the little market in Riften. That voice actor. The one that tells you to get the um, the specific jewel so he can make some uh, jewellery for his, his fiance Because he wants to get married. Just listen to his voice. Just talk to him endlessly because I could just sit and listen to that voice all day. Same for the the Khajiit, the one that plays um handful of the Khajiit. Oh, just so relaxing, the voices. They're like soft and slightly throaty. And yeah, they smoke like 40 a day and you can tell. Funny thing is, if you listen to the voice actor who does the Khajiit, if you listen to him doing other stuff, his voice is just, you wouldn't, you wouldn't know it was the same guy. Get these bits snippelated. Snippetations. Oh, we still attached somewhere. Tracks. Look at the tracks. Look at the tracks. Ooh. God, can you imagine if the Bane Blade was single link, individual link tracks? I, I, I would just, I'd just put it in the bin. <laughs> it wouldn't get built. I'd be like, nope. Nope. That's like a box full of spiders. Nope. In my mind. I would try a box of sugar bomb cereal, though, especially if it came with a free Captain Cosmos decoder ring. Oh, yeah, God. Dry roasted all around everything. I'm not eating Ewoks, says Muse. I try one of those, says EC Idaho. Welcome, EC Idaho. Uh, Muse says, yeah, no rivet counters. Bantha steaks, uh, barbecue want rats. Okay, Star Wars food sounds quite good. Yeah. Porg babs. <laughs> Give me a couple of pork babs. Porgs. Do 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 do. Let me get these bits cleaned up and then we'll build this piece. Side piece. But I'm not I'm I'm not into cooking and stuff. I am a bit loud, sorry. Uh, I'm, I, I, I hate cooking. I can't stand it. I love eating. To me, cooking is just something that gets in the way of the eating part of the, of the equation, of the process. So I resent cooking because it's stopping me eating at that specific moment in time. I don't, of course, resent when somebody else does the cooking. It's perfectly acceptable. Like when I press some numbers on my phone handset and, and half an hour later, a little man turns up with a bag full of delicious food. It's the deepest of dark magic, that, but I appreciate that because I'm not having to do the mechanical work. Also, uh, I'm a bit rubbish when it comes to cooking. If I'm doing like sausage and chips, that's fine. Put the sausage in, give it five minutes, put the chips in the chip maker, 12 minutes, done. That's as much coordination as I need. But if I'm making things where I've got like five different pans of food and they've all got different cooking times, it oh my brain is like Meh. I can't cope. Especially when you get like that. My worst nightmare is when you get two things that can go in the oven, and one says cook for half an hour at two hundred degrees, and the other one says cook for twenty five minutes at one seventy degrees. And I'm like, hang on, oh, oh. I can't oh, I can't have two different ovens. How do I know what temperature to use and how long to oh my brain's like no that's going in the microwave throw it in the bin we'll get something out of the microwave I can't be doing that 
when you've got to like combine different cooking times that's one thing but different cooking times different temperatures my brain's like Shup. when was this supposed to be fun yes i don't do cooking if i can avoid it. i do very basic cooking i mean i, I do all the cooking at the you know, for me and mama fox but it's simple stuff i don't, I don't actually enjoy the process i will make a spag bowl from time to time and that's but that's again that's because I can basically have a pan of spaghetti and a pan of bolognese, and there you go, happy times, done. I don't have to juggle 14 things uh, to make it all work. But yeah, give me all this, like, me doing, say, a roast dinner, a roast beef dinner or something, or Christmas dinner, F forget it. I've got these that need this long, and this needs that long, but that needs to go in the oven at this point. Then you take that thing out and leave it for five minutes and put it back in the oven. Then this bit needs this, but then you've got to... I'm just get me a takeaway. And there you go. Done. None of this nonsense. It's all far too complicated. I don't know how people can enjoy cooking. It's just like, oh, really? You're basically standing there moving. Basically, you're standing around moving stuff around in a pan. No, it's not exciting. Although I just tend to get the iPad with me and listen to some podcasts to make it less of a torturous thing. And as the person that does all the washing up as well, what makes it worse is, in my back of my mind, I'm like, I want to cook this thing, but I don't want to cook it because that's three extra pans I'm going to have to wash. And seriously, screw that. It's going something in the microwave. There we go. Done. How can I cook this all in the same pan and use just one pan because I can't be bothered washing 15 pans? You can get quite creative. If I won millions on the lottery and never had to worry about money again, I would hire a small number of people to do various. I'd hire someone to do camera work for me and to do all the video production so I can just do the building and the painting because, you know, it's a pain in the bum. But I'd also hire somebody to make my dinner. I'd just hire a cook. I don't mean a chef. I don't want Ponzi nonsense. I just want somebody who will literally turn up and say, what do you want? I want beef bourguignon. Bang, there you go. What do you want? Steak and chips. Bang, there you go. And I'd employ them. It was assuming I won millions and millions. I'd employ them to live on site and just be available 24-7. They can do whatever the hell they want at their own time. You know, I don't really care, but I just need to pick up the phone and say, person, make me X meal. Done. Bring it to me and I'll apply it to my face. There you go. Done. Three in the morning. I want steak and chips. I don't know why. I just do. Okay, I'll be there in half an hour. I shall bring it with me in half an hour and you can apply it to your face holes. That will be my ideal life, you know. People bring you food to me at all times of the day. Right. Uh, that's that bit. We now need to do some gluitations, a swig of coffeelations. Dry roasted and snap frozen Alderanian. Yes. Nobody suggested, like, you know, deep fried tauntaun. You thought they smelled bad on the outside. Yeah. That was my tall torn impression. <laughs> Clunk dead. I never said it was a good torn torn impression. I said it was shut up. Got to think how this goes together now without using my brain much. So this is going to be the same scenario as the last one. Uh, again, quite simple. Bit of glue, get it together, and then try and line it up with the metal ruler of lining up, which is somewhere. There it is. <laughs> Have it ready and on standby. Now, if you notice when I'm doing this, I've said this before, but I use the, the regular Tamiya glue first. And the reason I do that, the same reason I always use regular Tamiya glue, is because for big flat surfaces like that, if you put them together with Tamiya extra thin, they'll just fall apart again. You always want to use the Tamiya regular cement first. Because that's viscous enough to have a bit of grip. Just purely by fluid mechanics. The fluid dynamics of a thick viscous liquid holding the pieces together. 
because I could if I'd done that with just extra thin that would just fall apart instantly so always good to have both those people have asked me before you know what glue should I get and, and while I'll always say you know you don't have to have Tamiya but as long as you have something along the lines of Tamiya extra thin and regular Tamiya cement so it might be like you know the regular Revell contactor cement and the ammo by MIG extra thin similar kind of cements really They're basically the same kind of thing just important that you have the thick and the thin and that's the only real time that I ever use the thick cement is when I've got something that I need to stay I need it to support its own weight for a few seconds if it's if it will just you know if it's something that locks together and doesn't need to, to not fall over through gravity then regular thin cement's fine but you do need to sometimes count on a bit of fluid dynamics fluid mechanics viscosity I think that's going to be fairly straight. I think I can put this one that way as well. Almost. No. This one's tougher to do because there's no flat surface that doesn't have <clears throat> a raise. If I had a ruler that was half as long, I could do that bit there, but I can't. I need a ruler that's not quite as long. Sorry, a rule. <coughs> right. Uh, hello, everybody. Says Paul DiTomaso. Hey, Paul. How you doing, my friend? Hope you are well, dude. I need to sniffle my nose again. Wipe my... With the tissue of the happiness. Hang on. Let me just... Uh, I was thinking about food. And... Being under the lights and having a nose. Yeah. Ugh. Curse my overactive goblet cells. Gosh darn it. Right. So we've done that. That can sit for a minute. Uh, what we need to do now is put the lid back on the glue for the obvious reasons. That can sit there quietly, being well behaved. This needs to be assembled now. Hopefully, that's glue is flashed off enough that it's going to be a nice solid, solid joint. Now, the reason I was so finicky with that last time is because when you glue on this rear wheel, it doesn't actually lock into anything. It, this side just free floating, and if you glue this, it's all locked in, and it's like that. Your track's not going to line up. So what I did the last time was actually assemble this and then slip the wheel in afterwards. So, we'll, but this is the that was the back wheel. Sorry, this is the front the back wheel. Yeah, no, the front wheels. I don't know. I'm making stuff up there. So that should fit. Is just double check. That's R four and R three. That is correct. Three. I think didn't give me any trouble it was the other one that gave me trouble last time yeah so that can go in that's fine so we'll get that locked in there it was the it was the sprocket wheel at the back that gave me trouble not this not this idler wheel at the front i don't think but just to be safe i'm gluing this wheel in place <clears throat> But I won't glue the rear one in place, just so that if the track, if this one's like slightly rolled, that because it's not a hundred percent locked in place. If this one's a little bit far forward or far back, I've got the scope. So they're not quite lined up. I've got a little bit of scope to rotate the wheel at the back, which is the easiest thing to do, I think. This is what this is again. This is why this is a test build. It's trying to find the easiest and quickest and hassle free ways to do things. So that wheel goes on uh, the front here. <clears throat> I've actually forgotten since doing the one last time. That just locks onto the front there like that, which is fairly straightforward. 
not too troublesome. We shall and with some extra thins. Get a while I that. Use a little bit of the thick cement first, just a tiny amount. I don't want to use too much here because if I put a load of this stuff on, it will splooge out and make a mess. So just a touch, just there. Just give me a little bit of grip. And this is probably completely different to the way I did it last time. Because it was a couple of weeks ago. I can put that on there and let go now. I will need to clean up that little seam joint later on, but that's later on. Doing that. That goes there. there. Sorry if I'm not on camera. I can be messy here because it's both interior or internal and it's going to get mud all over it anyway. It'll be dirtied up. Lovely. It's on there. Uh, then we need to attach. I have actually forgotten what I did last time. Uh, the road wheels now go onto this piece. And they go like, like there, to say, like that, there, and then like that. There, I think. Yes, this is correct. Yes, hello, this is Dog. Put it back on that glow. Now, this is where it gets tricky now because you have to work a bit fast. Get all these to stick and be straight. So we'll get some glue. I might be off camera, so I do apologise. Glue inside these little sockets. Yep. Yeah. Bit there, touch of it there. They are fairly forgiving in that they kind of lock into place, but there's always, like most things, there's always a little bit of wiggle room. You can never assume anything's lined up straight. And it may seem like I'm going a bit overboard here, getting everything all lined up and nice, but that's because I am. It's the last thing you want to do is suddenly find that all your wheels are shonky. And with these, it is a bit like herding cats. Whereas if you're building a proper tank with individual wheels and say individual track links, you might get one wheel a little bit wonkitated, but it's not the end of the world. You can get around it. But with this one, these are like wheels on sticks. You get one stick wrong, every single wheel on that stick is out of place. And you're like, oh, flange. So that goes on there. Just double check. Uh, Interestingly enough, it doesn't actually tell you. It doesn't actually say to attach that rear wheel anywhere. That wheel you make here. Oh no, it does actually there earlier on. Oh well, there we go. So yes, what I may do is if I now put that together. Like that. That will go like that. There is nothing between, other than those spikes that hold them together, there's nothing between the wheels and the other side, the road wheels and stuff. But what I would need to do is get it all glued together, get the wheel straight and get this rear wheel on. I need to make sure that locks in nicely. Now it might be a nice firm fit. Might not. That does seem to be a nice firm fit but it's got some it's not 100 percent. there's some little wiggle to it like that you can see there hopefully there's some and it's like if i glue that in place and it's not quite right my tracks aren't going to fit i'm not going to glue that in place just yet uh i've forgotten how i did it last time now i'm um, usually what can i say go there that goes on there can sit loosely i think that wheel did last time i think it can come off and go back on again if i pop it out yeah we can place it in place it's no problem so i'll take that wheel off for now for now uh with these i can I need to get these wheels straight though don't i 
Let's lay it flat on here. Get these wheels lined up. So I'm just pushing them down so they're all in contact with the glass. That way, I at least know all the wheel, wheels are lined up to themselves. I can make sure there's about a 90 degree between them and the side pieces. So I can glue these two pieces together and we can start working on the track. And I won't glue this piece in yet. We can glue the wheel in later, make sure it all lines up. It doesn't show you to do it this way. This is breaking with the instructions a bit. But hey, it's my party and I'll cry if I want to. A bit of fat glue on that, just for sticky, sticky times. Shall I get these two together? Like that. A little bit extra thin going into the gap. Be very generous with the extra thing. And I think I said last time that it would behoove you when making this to actually uh, have all the tracks and other components ready to roll, if you pardon the pun, before you do this bit. The problem with that is remembering that you said that, basically. As in, I don't remember saying that. I've just remembered now and it's far too late. <laughs> so never mind. Never mind, moving on. Can't go back. But what we can do is use the metal ruler again to make sure these pieces are hopefully aligned. If I line that on there like that, have that bit there, it should. Now one is taller than the other, but it will allow me to see that they're not quite, the wheels here are not straight. They're pointing inwards. I can carefully line the wheels on the little axles. Just make sure. Really. Now, when I put the tracks on, of course, there will there'll be some flexibility. They will push them apart a little bit, so it's not the end of the world if they're not one hundred percent. I just need to make sure that, to my eye at least, they look sort of straight and true. No other way to, to get that, unfortunately. So it is a bit tricksy, but it all come good in the end. In the end, I shall have a look at the comments in a second. Let that dry for a few moments. That looks reasonably straight and true to me. It's about as good as good gets. I should put it there like that, you see. Uh, that looks about as good as it's going to get, I think. There aren't, there isn't like a, a flat surface I can use to make sure it's all lined up. So we'll just leave it there. That should be fine. There'll be some flex in these wee road wheels on the outside. <laughs> For when the track goes and when the track goes in. Uh, Antony says, everyone have a good evening or afternoon. Take it off, Anthony. Thanks very much. As much as I would love to stick around for the whole thing, I have to get my rear to sleep. Hopefully I'll be able to watch the streams soon. Cool. Well, thanks for coming in, Anthony. It's been nice to see you and see you next time. Uh, I'm doing okay, Fox, says Paul. Good. AC Idaho says, eggs, cheese, ham and pepperoni on toast, maybe. Ooh, yeah. Apart from the pepperoni, that sounds delicious. As we all know, pepperoni is just, you know, evil. Right. It's track time. Let's hit the track. <clears throat> yeah, that's about as sporty as I'll ever get. So first step, put that wheel there. <clears throat> first, first rule of, of track club. We don't talk about track club. Your Tonton impression got a better response than mine when I was with the Nowak's girlfriend, says Quano Man. My Tonton impression. What? How was my meant to know you're not meant to do that? What's a Tonton impression? Oh, a Tonton. All right. <laughs> I just, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I get you. Family friendly. I get you. Right. All the track pieces are, thank the Lord, numbered, which makes life a 
Easy. I'm going to risk it for a biscuit and use my... Uh... Oh, I'm not. I was going to use my god hands. But I can't quite get them in. You know, to try and save me having to clean up all the nubs quite so much. But I'm not going to risk it. Now this shouldn't take too long. If you remember last week, we've just I just very roughly sanded the edges to get rid of any obvious nubs. Because they are going to be covered in mud. And we don't need to worry about the mould lines too much. For most of the track. But I want to work quickly like I did last time. Purely because... I don't want to leave the, the track unit armour to dry too much. If it cures too much and it's all locked in place, I'm knacker then. There's no flexibility to make any adjustments. If I work quickly, I can hopefully have some still have some flexibility in the two sides. I can squidge things around. Squidge. Because one golden, there's always a golden lesson, but one of the golden rules of making models is just wiggle stuff around till it fits. Best lesson you can ever learn. How is the video today, guys, by the way? Is it looking good? Is it sounding good? Do let me know. I always strive to give you the best quality nonsense that I can find. I'm quite pernickety about video quality. And of course, live streams never look good anyway, but hopefully it doesn't look too bad. And this is where, uh, what, an hour and a half in, you say, yeah, we can't hear you, Fox. Not been able to hear you since you started. Thanks. Thanks for that. Oh, sorry, knocking the camera. I'm in the microphone even. Gentlemen, knock your microphones. Pating, 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 pating. <clears throat> yeah, I'm exceptionally grateful that, that these parts are numbered on the part. Because it's a nightmare. If you get like something like this, where all the parts, you've got all these different parts that are one link but they're all numbered on the sprue and not on the actual part. You wouldn't have a clue what the hell you were doing. That can go in the bin, that sprue. Oh, can be destroyed, yes. Uh, work quickly, he says. Madness. Yes, it's madness. It's heresy. Never mind that. Video normal, audio normal. Post idiot. There you go. Thank you for the feedback. Right, so let's get this done fastly. Oh, nominal, sorry. EC, video nominal, audio nominal. I said normal. Nominal always makes me think of the Wrath of Khan. I like the word nominal. If you say nominal, though, then you have to say affirmative as well when somebody asks you a question. Would you like a cup of coffee? Affirmative. Would you like some prunes? Negative. Never quite understood that on Star Trek. Why do they say affirmative and negative, not just yes and no? Affirmative, Captain. Why <laughs> say yes, Captain? It always makes me tickles me that because it's not something you would ever actually say in real life. You sound like a spoon. So we're not going to worry with that mold line going down the middle of the tracks. Like I said, luckily, I mean, I, if, on my build, I'm not. If I was doing a, if I was going to sell this and building it just to sell it, I may potentially clean up that mold line but yeah, I, I i'm fairly confident he can get away with saying it's it's a gap between two individual pieces of track sort of maybe perhaps in my mind it works and like i said before it's going to be covered in uh, mud anyway i am taking care to get the mold line removed from the little track pin heads though because that would look a bit stupid I can't say it's two different pieces of track if the track pin also has a big mold line down the middle of it. Uh, that will suffice. I can go there. I'll put that there for now. I shall put these little pieces here. We'll put them there when they're done. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm 
Uh, what else can I talk about? What's been going? So I've not been able to. Not really a lot going on this week that I can talk about. So I want to talk about. So not a lot of news, really. Not really. I've decided what I'm going to do with the uh, the Wazdaka bomb Daka Waz jet thing that I've been building. The Orc jet plane that I'm building for Goblin Gaming. Actually, let me just do a little. Uh, there you go. Link is in the chat. I'm doing that for Goblin Gaming. Uh, the video when it's I'll be filming the build that will go on their channel, which is Goblin TV. Oh, I don't need to do. Clean that edge up, don't I? Uh, it won't be going on my channel because it's is made for them. However, I will be making it available to my patrons advert free. Patrons and YouTube channel members will get to see it advert free. I figure it's making it it's making it for their channel basically but it's nice to offer something to my patrons and YouTube channel members so they get the option of watching it advert free on my channel now it's not gonna mean that every series everything I do for Goblin is gonna be you know only on their channel but this particular build I've bought the kit myself with my own money and I intend to sell it so uh, I can make money out of that kit Whereas if they'd sent me a model and I was filming it, then I'd, I'd ask that that would be on their channel and my channel. Because if they send me a kit and it only goes on their channel, I'd, how am I profiting from that? I'm not, so. Yeah, but this one's being done for them, so. So that one will go on to their channel. It'll go on to my patrons and members' channels so they can see it. And then I've got the Tabletop Trauma Centre uh, Wazdaka Jet. That will obviously be open for everybody then to see on my channel so I'll be doing two of them maybe not one after the other but I'll be painting two of them so one for you guys and one for Goblin and then once that's done uh, it's whatever I want to do after that oh well I do have my I've got my next e-models build sorted out if you if you watch the e-model show I think the week before last I did reveal that my next e-models build video will be the um, Canis Rex Imperial Knight but I'm just waiting to do that until James Mate's been able to get more uh, widen the, the Citadel paint range because I want to use a lot of Citadel paints on it. And they've only got so much in stock at the minute on their on sure store shelves. The problem was obviously that they were slowly building up their Games Workshop stock, uh, but then obviously Chocolate Velociraptor happened and everything fell a bit over then. So they're hoping to have more of the paints available in the new year. I think that's the plan. So as soon as I they've got more of stuff in, then I can start to uh, to work on that for them. So that should be fun. And I've not decided yet. Uh, I'll be painting it as the Canis Rex. So, but I, I don't. I, I'll probably do a bit more weathered version of the Canis Rex because you know the box art always shows it nice and clean. No. These knights are hundreds of years old and they've been through all kinds of battles and wars. They're not going to be nice. But I'm debating whether to to do the bare metal parts as something like C1 Metalizer. I do need to check if E-Models either stock it anymore or have any in stock because there's no point in me saying, no, we're going to do all the metal parts with C1 Metalizer and E-Models are like, yeah, we haven't solved that for four years and we don't, we don't have it anymore. So I'll have to see what they're, if they're going to stock it again. Because I think that would look fantastic. It wouldn't necessarily be something you could play on the tabletop. Because you're going to be handling it all the time. And you don't want to want to varnish over C1 Metalizer because it ruins the finish. But as a standalone display piece, I think C1 Metalizer on the Canis Rex. Although it's going to be, it will be challenging to do it in such a way that you can... Uh, get the other parts painted... And then the C1 metalizer because you've got to you've got to plan. You can't. I think you can mask the C1 metalizer, but you'd rather not. Kind of scenario. So it require a bit of logistical tinkering. But I don't know yet. I don't even know if they EV models sell C1 metalizer anymore. If they don't, then there would be no point in doing that. And I would have to do it on a different Imperial Knigget. 
again, I'm sure in the future, I will build more than one Canis Rex. Oh. Uh, bit there. Now, if you remember like last time I said, I'm not being too careful with these tracks. I'm not getting them all nice and beautiful and museum quality clean with no bits of scruff and, uh, you know, nubs and stuff. I'm not, I'm not that fussed because they are going to get covered in dirt and mud. And I'm not making this as a factory fresh, just off the factory floor tank. So I'm pretty sure in Warhammer law, even when something rolls off the factory floor, it's still probably knackered and battered and rusted and worn. I think things I think things roll off the uh, <clears throat> the Mechanicus production line already a thousand years old. That's what I think. In my mind. But I think that's one of the things that draws me to Warhammer is just the potential for dirt and weathering because all the equipment is that old. It's some of it's ancient. You know, you can have space marines tooling around in land raiders that are a thousand years old. You can have imperial knights that have been fighting chaos for, you know, thousands of years. They've been through God knows how many um, pilots. I can't remember the actual name for a pilot. If anyone in chat knows what the pilot of an, of an imperial knight is actually called, because I can't remember. It's probably a Latin word. Unless it's just pilot. Uh, so yeah, so I don't know when I'll be doing that Canis Rex for examples. In the new year at some point. So once the Goblin Gaming thing's done, hopefully I can get that done in a, in a, a week or two. <clears throat> hopefully it'll take about a week to do. Once that's done, it's kind of fair game then. I'm on my own dime. And I can start to get on my stuff. That's going to be fine. I think that's uh, a little bit scruffy there. Let's just get rid of that little bit of nub that's really obvious and can be seen from space. Yeah. I don't mind making little gouges in the plastic for tracks, though, because they're tank tracks. They're, they're constantly in being scruffed against rocks and the ground. So they're going to be a bit gougy. I can see hearts in the chat, but I can't focus on it. Does that mean Lynn's in chat? Let me have a look. Oh, no. It was rare Aquilina and it was a fox head. That's how bad my everything looks to me when I've got my lenses on. Uh, I'm channeling NASA, says EC Idaho. Video, no, oh, I see, yes, video nominal. Yep, good audio and video, says Ray, thank you. Goblin Gaming, for your, oh, that's me. Muse says dot, dot, dot. Gone quiet in chat. <clears throat> Nub there. Now this has got a nub on one of the track pins, which is annoying, but also not annoying because it gets filed down, which is okay. Do, do, don't forget, folks, I'm desperate for stuff to talk about, so do ask me questions in chat. Either at me, do it in capitals, or use a super chat, but just make sure you do one of those three things, just so I can see the question. What have you all got planned for Christmas? What are all your plans given the way the world is at the minute? Uh, this Christmas, I'm not going to be seeing family this Christmas because they can't come around. So there'll be no family visits. Quiet Christmas. Part of me likes that. It's like, oh, yes, a peaceful Christmas. What have you got planned? Wherever you are in the world, you're traveling or you stay at home. Itch on my nose, thank you. 
Oops. Scrape, 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 scraping, scraping all the nubs away. But nearly there. We'll have this done by the end of. It'll all be over by Christmas. Maybe. Yes, it's uh, weird not having Ted around because he's not got his internet. I'm missing out on. I don't know if it was supposed to be Chris tonight or if it was Ted's turn. I need to know what's happening with the Ted blade. I think it was Chris's turn tonight anyway. Yes, he's going to start painting his Matalan Refrigerator. I don't know what colour scheme he's got planned. I don't know if you're still watching, Chris. Tell us if, you want, if you'd like to reveal your chosen colour scheme. Feel free. I joked and said he should paint it in the 1983 Martini um, racing colours. And I've been thinking uh, the last few days... When I get round to doing my Kashachash Hatria, my high grade Kashachash Hatria, uh, I'm thinking of like a 1970s style for, colour scheme for it. And what I mean by that is, is to me, like just, just, I don't know if it'd work if it if it worked or else, but just like if you just do if if I think of the of the number 1970s, if I think the year 1977. And I write out the year 1977. It needs a stripy font and it needs to be in like oranges and browns because to me, or even reds, whites and blues, but it needs that kind of stripy curved numbers because that to me is the epitome of 1977 or the late 70s year, the way years were written. And to me, what I'd have to do is have a kind of 1970s style colour scheme. So sort of yellows and oranges and browns. Um, and those curvy striped numbers, I think there's some, I can't really put it into words and I haven't really got a, f a complete idea in my head, but there's just a, a general formless shape kicking about in my head of this kind of like retro 70s style colour scheme. I don't I don't know. I can't really explain it in, in proper grown up words, but you get the idea, I think. It's the kind of thing up now. I don't want to do that, do I? I want to do. I want to do that there we go all small parts should go into the relevant receptacles and wait there patiently uh, the, re the reason i got this idea was because um f i was brushing my teeth the other day about a week ago and for some reason i had a flashback to being a small i was probably about six or seven or something and this is how and this is an example, if, if you ever wondered how gormless I am with, with women, it's, it started at a very young age. I, have a, I had a vague flashback memory to being like five or six or seven or something. And going round to some girl's house, like some girl I knew from school. And bless my cotton socks, what did I do? But I went round, bearing in mind this is the 1970s and it's a girl. I went round and I had with me, uh, I'm, I'm pretty certain it's a matchbox catalogue, like a matchbox toy car catalogue. Sort of this kind of shaped thing with the flippy pages that way. And I just remembered like just all I talked about while I was there was this car. Look at the car. Look at this car. Look at that. Oh, wow. Amazing. And I probably bored her to tears. And she was like, oh. and I never went round after that. I was never invited round again. <laughs> because I was just totally, I was totally smitten with all the car, toy cars and this matchbox catalogue. And this would have been like 1975 or six or seven or something. And I had this little memory of that and that was quite charming and I chuckled a bit. And then I remembered just in my brain, I have this one memory. And this is why I wasn't sure if it was a matchbox catalog, because I had this memory of a photograph in the catalog. And it was basically uh, like a long nose vintage car, like a like an MGB in old 40s or 50s, you know, the long bonnet and then the, the two seats, but, that, but it had like a roof on it and it was on a road on a, on a really crappy diorama, like a grey strip for road, some green for grass. And the background was like a cardboard 
house with some lights coming through the window. So it, was, it looked like a little diorama scene, but it was really basic. And I had this really strong memory of this particular shot in the book, this particular photograph. And I remembered it. <laughs> I remember being a kid and looking at it, thinking, oh, I want that. I wish, oh, that's amazing. I don't know what it was. Um, so about a week and a half ago, I was just sat there doing something. And after I'd had that flashback, I went online to look up because I was like, was it Matchbox? I can't remember. I went online and I found an archive of Matchbox catalogues from like 1969 to 1984, I think. Now, I went through them all and sadly I couldn't find this specific image. So either, but there were some other images in the catalogues that, that tripped little flashbacks. So either I completely misremembered it and it was from something else like a catalogue or something, which was a thing in the 70s. Or it was just a Matchbox catalogue that wasn't in the collection that I found in the archive. Because there's really strong, like in my mind, really strong association with the Matchbox logo in stripy fonts and orange and brown stripy fonts and stuff. So I really was convinced that it was a vintage Matchbox catalogue. Um, but I couldn't find it. So there was much sadness. But then the other little bits, like there was one one page in one where they had all these like um, you got these two packs, and it was little little tiny you know little tiny cars. I think they were one seventy six scale roughly, the little diecast cars, and you got a pack of two. But they were all like military vehicles, so they were olive green with like a like um it was like a camper van but with a, a hospital cross on the side and that kind of thing. They were all olive drab coloured. And I think they weren't shiny. And for some reason, I had this real strong memory that when I was a kid, that was the most amazing thing. And I just obsessed over them as well. And I kind of felt a little bit the same way. I was like, oh, I remember how I felt when I saw these. Because I was like six or something. Toy cars were, the, were my entire world at that point. Toy cars and action men and stuff. So sadly, I couldn't find the catalogue. I just had this real strong memory of this particular picture. But it might have been, I mean, it may have been perhaps because for some reason in my mind, as well as like the really crappy diorama, which I mean, crappy by today's standards, but if I, when I was a kid, it was amazing. From the real basic diorama, I remember the, the, the house in the background, the sort of the cardboard cutout shape of a house with lights in it. I'm pretty sure that had lights in the windows, but I've also got this vague memory that the car had lit headlights. Which is making me think it was remote controlled or at least some kind of battery operated. You used to get those cars that you turned them on, they just trooped along and they have a little third wheel that would detect edges and stop them. And there were some sonic control remote control cars. Maybe it was it was something like that. It was a we did have a I did my brother did have a little sonic controlled radio controlled car, which is about this big. I think it was called the Gang Buster, and it was basically an American style police car. Uh, and you went, you had a little clicker, and every time you clicked it, it would change direction. That's all it did. It'd go click and it'd change direction. It'd go backwards or left or right. But it was huge, it was like this big. It was like about a foot and a half, two foot long, and it looked fantastic. Uh, and I think maybe, maybe it was on the box. I'm thinking now, maybe it's on the artwork on the box on that, like a different one you can buy from them or something. I don't know. I just remember it. Because I'm thinking, well, I don't think Matchbox ever did cars with lights in them. I don't think they got that involved. I don't think they got that far. But it was a nice little... So I spent a good few hours, you know, a couple of weeks ago, just going down memory lane, looking at all these old Matchbox catalogs. And that's the kind of... That's what tripped me to that kind of 1970s stripy number fonts kind of vibe that then got me into the idea for the Kshatri of doing that kind of stripy font kind of vibe thing. Either like browns and yellows and oranges or whites and reds and blues like the martini racing kind of style. All that kind of stuff. I don't know yet though. It'll be a long time before I get around to that I suspect. It was a good idea though. It'd probably be cool if I do do it. Right, nearly done. Tiny burps. Tiny burps. I shall have a look at chat in a moment when I finish cleaning up these last uh, three track pieces. Where are we on? Ooh, it's coming up to five o'clock. Yeah, we'll have this done by the end of the day, end of stream. 
I put this right, lad. I put my nubs. Oops. Downside of using this glass cutting board is that every time I do anything, it goes and makes a noise. I'm sure that's probably really loud for you guys. Apologies. Sand, 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 sanding, sanding all the crap away. There we go, that's that one. Two more to do. And we shall have a look at the chat occasions. I'll knock the camera with my entire head again. I think I know why my nose gets sniffly when I do these live streams. I've just realized. And it sounds really stupid, but when I wear my glasses with the lenses on the top, then my little flippy flappy lenses on the top, um, they, they're a bit heavier and they slip down on my nose a little bit and the lens on my glasses is coming out. Oh no. God, I panicked then. I thought the lenses on my glasses were coming out. Uh, they push it down a bit on my nose. And I think because it's pushed down on my nose a little bit, it squashes my nostrils and I think for some reason that gives me the sniffly nose. I don't know why. I don't know why. I just I think that's the cause of it. I think. But I'll take that because it's vastly superior to wearing the, the head mounted visor, which just gives you headaches and discomfort. You notice here, I'm not being too delicate and careful with these. I'm just getting them done. Because they are going to be covered in mud and dirt and all kinds of goodness. If I was doing a proper selling it on eBay job, I'd have to maybe not go as heavy with mud and dirt pigments because it might be that whoever buys it might want to play it. And you can't, you can use pigments and stuff, you can do it, but you, you can't get quite as handy with pigments on a tabletop playing model as you can with a display model. Because, of course, the thing with the display model is they're going to have to put it in their skirmish case or their crusade case, whatever travel case they've got. They're going to have to get it in and out of that all the time. It's going to be on the tabletop, people are going to touch it. It's going to be moved around and it doesn't have a base, so the tracks are in constant contact with the table. Eventually, if you go very pigment heavy, and even with pigment fixers, they're all just going to fall off eventually. And this is what makes me laugh about, you know, all the videos that are like, how to paint your tabletop miniatures. Brilliant. Now you can paint this. It's tabletop ready. Yeah. And nobody ever shows you about varnishing them. Like Warhammer TV never tells you about that. Duncan never shows you that. Mentions it occasionally. And they never talk about that. And it makes me laugh because you get these fantastic looking models. That look brilliant, but if you put them on the tabletop, all the paint will just come off. Yeah. Because they never address things like you want to make a space marine. OK, but you want the armor to be matte, but you want the gold trim to be shiny. How are you going to do that practically? but make sure everything's varnished. What's the best way to do that? You know, my personal thought would be, I've never really considered it much, but my personal thought would be, you paint your miniature, you gloss varnish the whole miniature, so it's nice and glossy. And then you either brush on, if you've got a good matte varnish that can do it, you brush on a good matte varnish to the bits you want to be matte, like the armor, or you simply use, once it's all gloss varnish, you simply apply Lamian medium or a gl matte glaze medium over the parts of the armor you want to be matte. Therefore, everything's protected by the gloss varnish, but the bits that don't need to be shiny aren't shiny. Things like that, you know, it's, everybody teaches you how to paint stuff, but nobody actually explains really how to then make it practical for playing on a tabletop. Because, you know, if you don't varnish your minis, even if you prime them, won't take long playing on the tabletop for all that paint to come off. You know, you all know that acrylic paints are a bit rubbish when it comes to durability. So, yeah, it's, it's a bit of a, a bit of a thing they miss out there from time to time. Makes me chuckle. Right, lenses up. 
Let's make a coffee. Look at chat. Then we'll do some trackage. Uh, Fox, are you and Colin going to do a joint build of Kshatria? Asks EC Idaho. Um, no, I think Colin's going to be filming it <laughs> rather than streaming it. So I will, and I'll probably wait for him to do his before I do it. The same way I waited for Ted and Chris to get their Bane Blaze built up. And I'll wait till Ted's finished painting his before I film mine. So. Uh, but no, I think he's going to be filming his. And it's not a complicated build or anything like that. Um, now I did ask you about Christmas. Let's have a look. Uh, where are we? Maybe get with son and wife for Christmas Eve dinner, says EC Idaho. We're going nowhere. May go to Salt Lake City to shop in a week, but in air. <gasps> I've forgotten what air sounds like, tastes like. Home and work as usual. Not sure what else, if anything, says Muse. Candy Graham, it'll be a traditional Christmas time for me as it's been for the past few years watching the model building live stream here. I'm going to put this over there. I think Chris said Ted's internet is up again. Woo! Cool. I still have a few of the larger Matchbox models of yesteryear cars and a World War One RAF ambulance truck. Oh, God, those model I, yeah, models of yesteryear with their flagship line, they were great. I used to have I had the little two-seat, not Morgan, but that kind of sports car thing. It was green. I used to have the little Ford truck. Uh, I used to have a fire engine. I had oh, loads of them, the Rolls-Royce. I think everybody had the Rolls-Royce one. Always clear cut miners, they'll be handled a lot, says Black Rifle. Yep, absolutely. Hello, you wonderful, beautiful people, says Raging Modeler, channeling uh, Alex from the that channel, What the Math, where they talk about the universe. Hello, wonderful person. I think the name of the pilot is Trevor, says Quantum Man, talking about something from about three hours ago. Uh, so, yeah, Black Rifle says, I clear cut mine. How do you then get the map back? Or do you just map varnish the whole thing? But then how do you, if you've got like a, somebody who want, you've got, say you want the, the, the weapon or the shiny parts to stay shiny, how are you splitting between the matte parts and the shiny parts? Or are you just not, not that fussed and you just, it just gets a matte coat? How are you getting around it if you're doing that? Like say you're going to, let's say, let's say heaven forbid, dear Lord, you're doing say an ultramarine and he's got the matte blue armor, but he's got shiny gold trim, for example. It's the only thing I can think of right now. Or for example, if you were doing, uh, the um, Grey Knights, who are all bare metal, but there's some paintwork on there as well. So how are you, how are you getting around it? My, say, my thought was to spray the whole thing gloss varnish and then just mat down the matte bits with Lamy and Medium. Because if that wears off, it doesn't matter. You can put it back on again. It's just the Lamy and Medium might come off, but you've still got the varnish underneath it then. Protect it. Uh, I have old matchbox cars from 70s and 75, says Ray Aquilina. I do the opposite. I, oh, it actually answers the question. I complete flat coat and then aqua gloss the shiny bits. Cool. So that's the that's the thing. It's it's more if you've got a gloss varnish that you can brush on. See, I, I've done it before. I've matte varnished the whole thing and then done a coat of pledge over the top because if when you brush it on little bits, it's quite good. So that could work as well. Uh, the raging modeler puts a super chat through for five pounds and says Dormok and Jalad at Tanagra. Raging modeler, thank you very much, dude. That's very very kind of you. I really appreciate that. Yes, that's one of my favourite Next Generation episodes, Darmok. It's just one of the best. Right, so we've got this bit. Uh, I may have some of the internet lag thing happening my, inside my brain thing, says Quano Man. Yeah, or well, you started watching an hour in and forgot to actually forward it. Right, let's get this tracks bits done. Tracks and bits. There's the thing. And you get the nodding, knowing smile of appreciation. Thank you very much for your little super chat. That's very nice. It's a little, it's a five. That's quite a lot. So thank you very much, dude. Very, very kind of you. Right. This is done. Hello. Yes, this is dog. I need to do the, uh, the trickolations. And this is where it gets trickolatory now. So let us consider. Let us get these parts numbered up. We have. Eh. We have, if I do this in order, then it requires least thinking. One, eight, three, ten. Leeds, play West Bromwich Albion, away. Anybody outside the UK won't know what that means. Two, uh, nine, I think. Eight, 
10. 6. 5. It's there. 6, 5. 4. 3, 2, 1. 6. We've got six, yeah, six, seven, eleven, twelve, seven, eight, nine, ten. Right, so uh, we start with two, three, and four. This is how it goes. Now, again, the beauty of this is it doesn't actually meet up in the middle, so you've got a bit of freedom. So, two, three, and four. So, put this this way. Cashier number two, please. One, two, th one, two, and three, and four. So it's those pieces. Two, three, and four. So we start with two, which goes here, I think. And three will go on with Camarata. Three will go. Here, like that. Hey, yeah, we'll get come back. And then, oh, we'll go in that one. And then four will go on top there, which should have that bit locking in there, like that. Do four first. Yeah, the wheels are a bit close together, so I'm going to have to push them apart a little bit, but that's fine. That's why we have rush the tracks because we need them to have a little bit of wiggle room there's two little teeth and there's two recesses there and they're a bit too close together so i need to push them apart a little bit just to get them to sit in like that so four two no, three even no your numbers fox that one there That. Not quite right. What's going to happen now is that I had a dream of a time with these the first time, and now they're going to be a pig and make me a fool. Make a fool out of me. There. On there, and then it should just about, it's not quite straight all fixable I hope remember how I said there was a bit of rotation still in those wheels yeah they weren't quite lined up so I can do that now because they're not fully glued in place I've got a little bit of wiggle to them so I can do that now so if we get four on there first let's get four in as our locating slice our locating set of tracks I'm going to use the fat glue just for these two little recesses. Four goes in first. Let's double check that is four. Yes, that's four. Make sure those two tabs are in the relevant sockets. Make sure those tabs are in. One's in and one's in. That one's not in. There we go. That one's in now. And that one is in. I'm in. Extra thin. The other thing is the extra thin is uh, has a stronger grip than the regular cement, which is why you want to follow up with the extra thin and not just leave it with the fat cement. So that's that one. Not being a hundred percent cooperative. Not being great at all there. Eh? Bit wonkulatory. Hmm. Okay, slight and I'm off camera, I do apologize. Vicky to see what I'm actually doing here. I think that's on. Let's try the next piece, which should be five. I'll do the little smaller pieces in a moment. Five should be there. Should have a grip point there better a 
little bit of a finicky fit. But it'll go in. Right, so get five on. I'm kind of jiggling around a bit, not quite the normal order of build that Games Workshop would have you do. Squishing away from that a little bit. On that. Like a glove. Squish it down. Extra thin going. I'm being really generous with the extra thin. Because again, I can be. It's going to get covered in dirt and mud. It's not going to do any harm. So I can get quite handy with it here. Push down. There. Let's come back and do these two front pieces. So we've got uh, three and two, wasn't it? So three needs to go here. Looks like that. Slots in there like that. Just like that. Not like that. Like that. This I can do with just the extra thing. I can slap it all in. Slap it on. That joke would be funny if I didn't have to lean over and then do the button and then take three seconds to do that. It makes it not quite a speedy joke out of the gate. It's not exactly the bestest of looking joints there, but it'll do. There's some play to be had. And it, but this is the thing with this, this wheel not actually locking into two different sides of the tank. It's quite tricky to get everything to line up nicely. Come on, get him. That's lined up with the wheel. I need to rotate that wheel around a bit more, I think. Right, finicky. We'll get the other one in. Put some fat glue on this just for the sake of speed. And that's two, so that needs to go in there like that. Apologies, like I say, if this is all half off camera. Well, it can't be all half off camera. It'll be half off camera or all off camera, Fox. Don't talk rubbish now. Learn to use your words properly. It's a bit jinky. Yeah. But again, mud, dirt, dust. Not a big problem. When it comes to scruffy, scruffy tanks, like me and Ted will always tell you, Weathering hides all your sins, and it's the best way to hide sins is with weathering. But even more so when it comes to tanks. If you build aircraft, you're a bit knackered. You know, if you if you make a mess of something, you're kind of screwed. There's not a lot you can do with it. If you're making a tank, well, tanks stay clean for about three minutes when you leave the factory. After that, it's just you know horrendous mess times. So don't sweat it. Is what we're saying. It doesn't look quite right. I just weather it out. It'll be fine. No one's going to know. No one will ever know the truth of the thing. Right, so we now need to do... I'm going to jump ahead and go another order again. Uh, because I want 1 and 12. So 1 should go here. While I'm at this end, and it's all still glued in place but workable, I'm going to focus on this end. Not supposed to. But you know what? I'm a maverick. What can I say? Goes there like that. I want to be more cooperative. Probably an easy way that they could have done this, but it's actually not that bad. You do have to kind of herd cats a little bit. A little bit of herding cat action going on, but not too much. We'll go on there to smooth that off because it's gone a bit lumpy dumpy. And then I want piece number 12. Uh, it goes on the end of that. So piece number 7. Piece number 12. There we go. That's it. Swish stick. This will sit on that joint there. So I can probably just get this in. That. This, this is where the track stops. So it doesn't actually matter now with this bit. 
It's the one the one saving grace of these tracks. They don't go all the way around. You're not having that nightmare of tracks that don't join up in the middle, which is terrible. Not often that happens, but it does. In fact, let's get them back out again. Let's just let's just get some glue on up there, I think. Because I wasn't really getting any glue down in that little joint. There we go, that's on. Now, one thing I've learned from the last track I did was not, I repeat, not to try and clamp this together to make it all join up. Because you remember the last time I did this, I couldn't get the armor plate in there. It was a rough job. I had to sand it all down. <laughs> you don't have to worry about that too much. So there we go. That's them tracks on. Uh, so this one needs to be part six, which is this one. We'll go there. Again, the little, oops, the little notches, the little sticky out teeth should line up quite nicely. And as indeed they do, fantabulous. Get some glue on there. Touch of glue, touch of glue. I hope this is all on camera. I've got no idea where the camera actually is. I'm too busy concentrating. That seems to go on like a glove. Lovely. I'm just, it's not as, keep in mind of course I'm probably making this look a lot more complicated than it actually is but that's because I'm you know 99% idiot and 1% another idiot so I make I make doing nothing look complicated Put that flat. there you go lovely uh, then we want piece number seven. Oh, shucks that's why you need a dad device Piece number seven, which is that one. I just said shucks and got away with it. So we need to put this rear wheel in now, this uh, special wheel of happiness. Now I need to make sure that the first bit lines up because after that it doesn't really matter. So that goes in there. If you remember, this is the one that's got some play to it. So you need to get it, make sure it's lined up. So if I put that there, that one goes here. But then we need to make sure that wheel lines up with the first piece of track on that. So the easiest thing to do is going to be to, I think, uh, eight, nine, ten, eleven, eight, nine. So eight will be here. So if that bit goes there. It's going to be the flat bit here. If I glue on piece eight, because after piece eight, it doesn't matter about lining up. But I need to make sure there's not a massive gap between piece seven and piece eight. So if I put that on there, like there, it was there. Get that on there, because that's my anchor point. That sits on there like that. I need to get this wheel in here. Wheeling and a dealing. I'll get some glue inside there. I've got to work quick now. Do that way around. So that goes in there. Like that. That's upside. I've done it on the wrong side. Oh, you spoon. Put piece eight there. So do it on the right bit, Fox. You know what I mean? Honestly, can't get the staff. Add the wheel upside down. So that sits on there. That will be on. That's not right. That's not right. I had it right the first time, you idiot. All good. You guys are all like watching through your hands now, aren't you? All like, oh, good Lord, what the hell? That goes on there. That goes on there. I can turn that wheel round to make it all line up. There we go. That is now lined up so I can glue this piece in place, glue piece seven in place. Glue that, 
Let's get this out of the way. I'm going to get glue on them before their time. I'll get glued in there. Glue it onto the drive wheel, sprocket wheel, space wheel, space wheel. Some more glue down in there. Set it like that. Okay. So, hopefully you can see now that lines up there. It is difficult because there's no connection between this armor and that wheel. Same with this one, but that locks on here so you can get it nice and straight. This one is just a peg and there's nothing to stop you getting it at a funky angle. So you, this is why I'm, I'm trying different ways of doing it just to see how it all fits together. So that was piece eight, uh, nine, 10 and 11. But I don't need to worry about how far this goes up. So now I can just I can free wheel this now. So this bit can go. Yes, it's messy. Doesn't matter. Eight, nine. So nine can go here. Like that. Get some glue in there. See, it isn't always the case that even, you know, experienced builders don't always do beautiful, nice, neat, clean, tidy builds. Sometimes it's, if you look under the surface, it's probably horrible. But that's the way we all do it. And that's why I'm happy to show you me fumbling around doing this. Because, you know, if I'm doing, if I'm having to figure this out, then so is somebody who's not quite as experienced. I'm not that experienced. So if I can do it, anyone can do it. And if I do it with a struggle, then it, when somebody else is doing it with a struggle, at least they know that's normal. There's a lot of people panic when they get any kind of building. There's something a bit tricky and they're like, oh, I bet everybody else had a real easy time with that, but I really struggled with it. And it's like, no, not necessarily. Especially when people are filming things, a lot of times don't forget when somebody makes a video about how to make something or something like that. They don't always show the stuff that doesn't work. That's the trick of it, you see. Now this piece here is going to hold the wheel in place. The wheel's still a bit loose and wibbly wobbly. That's where this piece, now final piece, fixes it in place because this goes like that. It should be part number 11. Yes. Making sure before I put it on. And this piece will just lock in there and is glued to the bodywork. That will now anchor the wheel in place. That wheel ain't going nowhere. Well, it'll go somewhere for a little bit, but it'll, it'll eventually settle down. That wheel is now locked in. Glue down that side. Glue down there like that. You see there, lovely. I can't say it's the most beautifulest bit of work I've ever done, but it works. There we go. So that is now in. I can lock that down there. So I, I don't mind, you know, I don't mind showing me doing a half assed job of things like this. I I know that when I do builds, they don't always come out perfect because I am, I'm, I did it before, painter, not a builder. And the team inept is, the inept is strong with this one. But it's okay to be, you know, not the best builder in the world. It's okay to be a bit gormless about certain parts of the hobby. You know, not everyone's a professional model maker. I'm certainly not. But that track now glued to the, the pieces of the hull here. This is now locking that wheel in place. So it's not going to go like that too much. It'll have a chance to sit there quietly. And all these bits where I put glue down the middle will all kind of lock into place. These will all lock together. And eventually that'll all seal up nicely and it'll be locked tight going nowhere. Here you go. I think going forward that's the way I'd have to do it. Seem to be the, the simplest way of doing it. Changing the order a little bit, but do this end while you still can and you can rotate that wheel around a little bit. Because it's that's the problem with it, because they're little pegs and little recesses, there is some wiggle room as to having them straight that way. 
So it might be like an angle like that, or it could be it rotated round that way or that way. And this one at the back, especially, there's some play in it. It's not like you can put the wheel in and it's locked in place. It's got some some wiggle. And if you were to glue that wheel in place and then put this track on and suddenly find that that wheel at the back was rotated around that bit a bit too far, and this is all glued in place and the wheel's locked in place now, you can't put that piece of track on. You're knackered. So I like to keep my options open, which is why I wanted to be able to wiggle that wheel around. Because if I glued that wheel in at the start, when I put these two pieces together and not put the track on, and it had set and it was too far forward one way or the other, I'd rather have a massive gap or a piece of track that didn't fit. So always try and keep your mind open as to having as many construction options as you can. Oh, sweating now. Uh, where are we up to? Let's have a look at chat. Uh, can anyone help me? He says Papasiak. Welcome, Papasiak. I accidentally painted over my decals. How can I restore them if I don't have more? Um, can I rub alcohol on it? He says no. I think if you've painted over them, um, whatever you do to take the paint off is probably going to either damage the decal anyway, or at the very least, it'll float off and it it won't work after that. Um, I think if you've painted over it, you're kind of knackered, to be perfectly honest. There are ways you can remove water slide decals. If you're using Microset and Microsol, you can actually use the Microset to lift them back off again. But it can be hit and miss. It doesn't always work. It's, even then, it's not guaranteed. I think if you've already painted over them, though, you're going to have to do something so aggressive to get rid of the paint that it's going to destroy the decal anyway. I'm afraid. Um, but at the end of the day, I wouldn't worry about it too much. Don't worry about it too much. It's at the end of the day, and I've always said this to people. Oh, there's a bit of post-it note on there. Um, if you make a model and you make a mess of it, it's not the end of the world. Just it's just that model. As long as it's not like a four hundred pound, you know, you one thirty fifth U boat and it costs you four hundred quid and it's for a museum, and you know, or you're doing it for commission or something like that. If you're just building it for fun, you're doing it for yourself. If something goes wrong. It's not the end of the world. You just you carry on with it. You finish it off and you can put it in your cabinet. You know, if I'm if I'm building whatever and it, it, the paint job goes to pot. I will either strip it down and start again or, you know, if a decal goes wrong, I'll just accept the fact the decal has gone wrong and I'll still finish it off and I'll put it away in my cabinet. And then uh, before you know it, you'll be on the next kit and the kit after that, and the kit after that. So as long as you're not like doing a commission or something like that, which is a bit more of a tricky situation. If you're just building for fun, the end of the world. I wouldn't worry about it too much. You just know for next time. It's always a learning lesson. 528. I think we can get the yeah. I think we can get the armor on the top of this. We need. Uh, what do we need? We might get the whole thing done. Let's get the whole thing done. Yes, I don't think there's really any way you can take off the decal if it's got the paint on it. I think you've uh, a bit knackered there. But like I say, I wouldn't worry about it. Just have fun finishing the rest of the model off. Um, and just crack on with it. Unless it's like, you know, a Romulan Warbird where you've got the w pattern on one wing. Okay, you're going to have to work around that a little bit. <laughs> yeah, hopefully not. But yeah, I, I, just just have fun with it anyway. And there, there is also nothing wrong at all. If something goes wrong with the build, there is nothing wrong at all with just stopping and abandoning it. We've all done it. I've done it. Everybody's done it. We all have at least one kit that we got halfway through and either lost lost fell out of love with or got bored with or something went wrong and we just like you know what it can go into the i'll sort it later bin and it might be something you come back to later on that you fix when your skills have developed it might be something that you never go back to and you just end up using it for spare parts you strip it down uh, or it can become a test pig it just becomes a thing that you test out paints and stuff on we've all got I don't actually have one because I, I think I threw it away. It got broken, but we all have at least one model that's just there to be test. It's a test thing. You just try out new paints and things on it. You strip it down. You keep. It's not an actual finished model. So yeah, there's a, there's always we all do it. We've all done it. You're not alone in doing something like that. We've all got to the point in a build where we've just thought, you know what, I'm just going to walk away from it because at the end of the day, there'll always be another build. There'll always be the next thing to work on. Right, right now, I need the little springy thing, don't I? But I can't remember what, what uh, sprue that is on. It is on. Is it on that sprue? No. Is it on that sprue? 
No. Okay, what screw is it on? Does it even tell you? Uh, it lists it as unnumbered part. This is the one downside of this kit. Yes, all the parts look different and you can find them on a sprue, but it's knowing which sprue it's on. Uh, not on that one. Okay, not that one then. Uh, this one, I'm looking for the little spring thing. Hang on, it's not that one. And when you've got like nine sprues, it's a bit of a pain. And you're trying to be on camera and not like across the other side of the room. Not that one. There it is. There, there she is. There she is. Not so crippled as we were led to believe. It tasks me. It tasks me. And I shall have it. Oh. Oh, my rug's escaping. That bit, that bit, that bit. Yeah, so it, it's, it's annoying and it's frustrating and it can be quite upsetting if you, you know, if you put a lot of work into a model. But at the end of the day, it's just a model. You can buy another one and you can have more fun with it. I've, I've also done things where I've worked on a model and it's gone horribly wrong. And what I do is I end up making it look like a, a destroyed version of something. Like I've had models where I've made a right mess of some bit of paint right towards the end of the process. And there's nothing worse than that. So what I've done is, like you said, oh, what's I was doing? I did a, I think I was doing a Freedom Gundam at one point. And something went horribly wrong with it. It wasn't one you guys have seen. But something went horribly wrong and I got... It was either like a, a, a gluey fingerprint in the paint on one of the wings. Or something went wrong or... I can't remember what it was now. It's quite a long time ago. But anyway. Basically you've got this nicely painted Freedom Gundam with some big thing on the wings. And I'm like, oh, there's no way to cover that up. So what I did was I just thought, you know what? I'm going to finish it. I just got the Dremel out, did some battle damage in the wing, and said, there you go, it's taken some heavy damage to the wing. Made it look like it had taken some kind of, like, you know, weapon fire, and it got some charring and scarring and damage and stuff. And it covered up the mistake perfectly, and just made it look like a battle damaged gumpler. Might not have been a freedom. I can't remember what it was. It was something anyway. So there's always something you can do with it, even if it, you know, turns out to be battle damage or something drastic like that. As you remember, this hobby is just for fun. It's, we're just doing this because we're, we're grown men making toy soldiers. Let's just, when you boil it down to that, it makes you realise how 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 silly it can be. All the stress, because we all do it. We all have the same stresses and worries, and you know, we all get stressed out when we think something's not quite working, and we're like, oh, God, I can't get this. To, oh, it's really, and it's frustrating when you're in a build, build and it's not working out. If you take that step back and say, you know what, I'm making a tiny plastic soldier. If it goes a bit wrong, I'll just buy a new tiny plastic soldier. It's not the end of the world. And it gives you perspective. So just have fun with it. It's frustrating and it's embarrassing. It's like, oh, how the hell? Oh. Yeah, you, you kind of look at yourself and want to slap yourself around the head. But just, just make the most of that model. It's still got some life to it. You can still have fun with it. Or if absolutely less, if it's something like a tank or an armoured vehicle, there's one other trick. If it was, for example, a tank or a truck or something like that, like a military vehicle, or even if it wasn't. Uh, let's, oh, nearly. Was that Stabity? <gasps> nope. Ha, didn't get, didn't get Stabity. Uh, yeah, I, I remember one guy contacted me and he was making a pickup truck. And what's it he did? He'd done something. I think it may have, he may have messed up the windscreen or something like that it, it, with glue. It was something like that that you just can't get around. You can't hide it. There's no way to fix it. And he was really, because he spent like, you know, weeks and weeks painting this thing. And I said, well, you know, why don't you? Instead of just like getting really upset and throwing it away, why don't you use the old tarpaulin trick? He said, what do you mean? I said, well, you're making this nice shiny truck. Why not make it? Instead of a nice shiny truck, make it a nice shiny truck that's parked up and it's got a tarpaulin draped over some of it. And the tarpaulin doesn't have to cover the whole model. It just happens to cover that bit that you've screwed up. 
and he's like, what do you mean like it's in like a garage and maybe he's, he's got a dust sheet over it. He's, he's half pulled the dust. I said, yeah, something like that. Anyway, oh, that'd be br and he had this idea and it turned out in the end, I can't remember who it was now. It turned out in the end, what he did was he took it the next step further and he built a little, a little sort of um, junkyard diorama almost. He basically weathered it and rusted it and, and gave it some more damage and put a tarp over half of it and made it look like a truck that had been left out in someone's yard or in a junkyard or something for a few years and it had just rusted and leached and got the, the moss and stuff on it and it went from being he was building a factory fresh shiny pickup truck he then got really upset because he'd messed it up but then took advantage of that it sent him on a whole different path and he'd never done a diorama before and he'd never done weathering before it sent him on a whole different path and he ended up with a really nice looking weathered rusted abandoned it wasn't like horribly it wasn't like a rusted shell it still looked like a truck but it'd been out in the out in the rain and the dirt and stuff for maybe a couple of years with this you know tarpaulin over it and he ended up with that and he was so happy with it in the end and he's like he, not only had he actually learned weathering because he'd had to learn it to do it he hadn't even started he was just going to do a tarpaulin and it ended up with him learning how to do the weathering or teaching himself to do weathering so he could make it even more sort of battered and lost. It was brilliant. He, he had a right whale of a time. And that was like a, that was like a little uh, little sort of you know twenty five quid, twenty five dollar AMT kit or whatever it was, the only older Revell truck kit, so you know, pickup truck thing. And he had a whale of a time with it. And in the end he was really happy with it. And I said, see you snatched victory from the jaws of defeat. But it may mean that you have to adjust your, your final expectations. You may have to go from wanting to build A and coming out with building something else. But there's always something you can make of it. There's always some way to come. And as, as uh, somebody who adores weathering, of course, my thing is always to weather it. But now, we've got these little nibblets on here. I've got to get around all these little rivets to get rid of the mould line. This may take a moment. So don't lose hope. There's always something you can do. And it, like, it might be a case of, well, you know, you didn't want to make this pickup truck in a corner of a junkyard rusted out with tarpaulin over a bit of it. But you know what? It's a nice looking build at the end of it. And you can always go and make another truck the way you wanted to originally. So that was my lesson for today. It's, it's stressful when you realise you've goofed. You're like, oh, you moron, what have I done? You, you tell yourself off. And it is frustrating when you do anything wrong. But, as well, it's not a commission, or, you know, something like that, you're just building for yourself. Treat it as a sudden, unexpected twist in the story of that build. Am I on camera? Yes. Yeah. You've gone from building one thing to building something else. And if it goes really weird, whatever it is, buy yourself a cheap space shuttle kit, take the boosters, stick them on it, make a spaceship. There you go. Put loads of other bits on it. <laughs> Turn it into a spaceship. <laughs> always the way. Always. Steve will tell you that always works. Doodle 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 Right. Oh, say hello. That's gone on the floor. No, it hasn't. Yay. Uh, for some reason, that was a lot faster to sort out than the other one when I first did this. I mean, this little mold line. I hate getting rid of mold lines with knives. But it's such a small mold line. I don't want to get rid of the little rivets. Rivet. Rivet. Do a barrel roll. So, yeah, don't, don't lose hope. There's always something you can do, even if it goes completely to pot. When I was much younger, I was doing a JU-52. JU-52? No, a Junkers 88. I was doing a Junkers 88. And I had this great idea to do the sort of the winter camo with the green with the white, with the wiggly lines all over it. But I was like 17 and I didn't have an airbrush and I was an idiot and I had no abilities whatsoever. And I made a complete arse of it, as you can imagine. Painting with Tamiya, but yeah, it's... But, and I was like, even in my inexperienced youth, I was like, this looks like garbage. This looks absolutely awful. What have I done? 
it was like a little five a little 10 pound airfix kit well when i you know when i was younger it was a lot of money and i'm like oh I've ruined it oh i'm so upset then i was like you know what i'll do <laughs> i made a little i, I, I uh, carefully and deliberately um did some damage to it broke off the tail plane and did some damage to the wings and bent the propellers stuck it in a little diorama and covered it in snow and there you go it's a crash plane so it's all knackered in in a landscape and it's got some snow on it with like the snow powders and stuff and it just it it covered up quite nicely <laughs> so there's always something you can do it's always some way out of it right that's that done let us retract my blade resheath my implement you are a matron matron i said the word sheath didn't i oh clean off my little squishy pad uh, quick look at chat we've got 20 minutes uh uh i've lost track of the says dang it thanks anyway but i'll have to try it's worth a go at the end of the day the worst thing you can do is have to strip all the paint off and repaint it but if you haven't got the decals yeah you can make something of it when a man says i'm not going to <coughs> oh reputation excuse me i'm not going to weather my right hand oh trackage joining says fester yes it looks a lot i made it look a lot more complicated than it is it doesn't meet up in the middle so you can start at one end and work your way around the tricky bit is just making sure that the little individual track links here match up with these bits everything lines up that's a bit exactly perfect but it'll do it'll do get some mud on it nobody will know uh how difficult would it be to motorize a bane blade says paul de tomaso uh well you've got absolutely no wheels at all you'd have to add all the running gear probably not difficult i've seen it i think I've, i'm sure i've seen it done um you could probably get you could probably cannibalize the running gear from other tanks but at that point you're kind of scratch building a remote control tank really <laughs> because outside of this bit and that bit there's nothing in there and there's literally no running gear or axles for them to join to it does make me wonder how this works because if you look at the wheels the axles in the middle there below this piece of armor so what's supposed to be between in the in the real thing what where's the yes i don't quite know how that works um a bit, a bit, a bit, a bit, a bit, do, 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 do. paint the tank like it's a cobra tank from gi joe says paul i don't know i've never watched gi joe uh black my i was gonna say black rifles in them but he's been in all, all show uh, so glad we've been able to catch this work has been so stressful lately and not had any mojo says raging modeler exactly i've done nothing this week um because of various personal reasons i've not had a chance to get to the bench but when i have had a little tiny bit of time it's kind of it's a bit of a lie i've had a little bit of time but when i have had a little bit of time i've not been in the headspace to do any work but i've had so little time anyway but uh yeah so it is nice to get to the bench this is good for me it means i get on with stuff right so this needs to go on there like that you see leave that there first of all attach your luminications your little lighty things very simple i know what i can do now i can get rid of this thing Hang on a minute. i don't like working on glass put that down there there we go that'll fall over in the middle of the night and i'll ever so slightly poop my pants not that i wear pants in bed but you know you know what i mean i might have a bit of a, a, a sudden shock when i'm half asleep and i click it'll make me nervous hey i'll tell you what when did amazon start delivering at half seven in the morning my brother uh who i've not been my, i'm not going to see my family over christmas for his reasons uh my brother was wondering about how to get stuff to me and mama fox and i said well why don't you just order things on amazon which is what you're gonna do anyway or whatever you order why don't you just order it but have it just delivered straight here you don't have to it doesn't have to be gift wrapped you're ordering something for, for mama fox or for me just order it online anyway which you're gonna do but have it delivered here have it marked as gift so they don't put the invoice in there and then it doesn't really matter He's like, oh yeah, I never thought of that. And I thought, no, I didn't think of that either. Anyway, uh, that's what he's done. So a package turned up this morning at half seven. I was 
fast asleep. I was dreaming about God knows what, probably something brilliant, whatever it was. And suddenly, my body is such, my brain is such that it's acutely attuned to the sound of the doorbell. So I could be in the depths of the deepest of sleep. Of What's that? Delta wave sleep, I guess, isn't it? I could be in the deepest of delta wave sleep, you know, virtually comatose. And if the doorbell goes, I'm up and out of bed in milliseconds. It's like within a microsecond, I'm halfway down the stairs thinking I should put some pants on. <laughs> Probably. Right, so that's going to go in there. We're going to have no problems with this this time. Now, look at this. Remember the last time we did this, I had to shave the sides of this thing. Not this time. Not half. Because what I've not done is clamp this together. Remember last time what I did was I glued all this and then I taped it like that to make this and it made it bow in a little bit. Because these tracks don't need to line up perfectly here because no one cares. You're not going to see them. It doesn't actually matter. I'm really enjoying this build. I've got to be honest with you. I'm really enjoying this. It's going together. Even though the tracks have been tricky. It is still going together really, really nicely. I mean, look at these these top panels here. Despite the fact there isn't a real strict peg and socket set up, they've gone together perfectly. Look at that. That's just a that isn't even a gap you'd have to fill. That is just literally a panel line in the in the plating on the armor that you could just it literally looks like just part of the armor plating. I need to make sure I get this the right way around. So this needs to be that way and then these on the outside. So it's that way. There we go. Need to make sure you get these bits on the outside because these are the bits that have some involvement with the sponsons. Sponsons! Sponsons! Uh, I think I might do some fat glue here just... Now, I'm not doing fat glue here for stuff to stay in place. I'm doing fat glue here because it doesn't evaporate away as quick as extra thin. A little touch there, a little touch there. Tiny touch. Just enough to give it some stick. I can come around in a minute with the thin. Yeah, this is a... You're going to enjoy this build, Cole. You are going to love it. Now the extra sprue that I got you, Dad's got you the Bane Blade obviously, we, we, we went halves on the Bane Blade and I got the extra sprue. Well actually no, we went halves on that as well, we both went halves now, what am I talking about? Yeah, so anyway, it doesn't really matter. The uh, the extra sprue, uh, what you get in the extra sprue is two extra sponson guns uh, and some extra like ladders and barrels and things to do with as you see fit. In the kit itself, by default, you get two sponsons, one that goes on each side, and it can go here, here, or here, like a sponson gun on the side. Um, the extras kit gives you another set of sponsons, basically. It's, it's a, two of the sprees you've already got in the kit. So you can add two extra sponsons if you want to. You can have four sponsons. Uh, and you can also add all the extra barrels. You've got some extra fuel barrels if you wanted to stick them in somewhere, a bit of plastic card. You've got extra ladders and that. You can do whatever you want with it. You do you. But I think you're going to love it. I think you're going to have fun with it. Because it's a nice straightforward build. Oops. I just tried to put I just tried to put the, the lid for my white glue into the lid of my guns. I'm an idiot. It's a nice straightforward build and you can just have fun with the painting and the weathering then. But yeah, you definitely have a bit of fun with those bits. And even if you don't use all those bits on the Bane Blade, you've got a lot of extra sprues there for other things. But just have fun with it, mate. I think you're going to love it. I think you're going to really like it. I think you shall have a jolly old time. And if you don't, we'll find you and we'll kill you. We won't really. Right, this needs to go on here like this. 
which I should have put in first, but never mind. Live and learn, Fox, live and learn. That just slides in down there. And as Wolverine would say, snicked. There you go. That's in. Lovely, dovely. I didn't take the... Oh, I forgot to get the seam line off that. Oh, well, I can fix that later. I forgot to take the mould line off it. That's cool. I can get to it later. It's going to be covered in rust anyway. There we go. It's a bit of a mould line there, but I'll clean that up later on. That's that bit. We've already made the barrels. Roll out the barrels. Roll out the barrels of Prometheum. So this can go on here. Look at this, we're going to have all this done. Right, claws of, claws of business today. I know it's near eight. That goes on there. You see how I wanted to leave that off now, because that would have made perhaps getting in there a bit tricky. Extra thin to run down the gap. Yeah, but Colin, the thing is with your Bane Blade, you do what you want to do with it, mate. I don't want you to ask me how, I'm, how you're supposed to paint it or how it's supposed to look or whether you can have extra guns. Your imagination, you can go you can go book wild with it. If you want to put like extra guns on it and guns on the guns and more guns on If you want to get like an extra, another extra spree and put six sponsors on it, you can do it. If you want to put all the cannons together, in that box you can build one of eight different variants of this tank. I'm sure you could have a wild time combining all different eight variants. Let's show you. Let's have a look. You can build. You can do it if you really try. I'm sure there's a song there. You could build the Bane Blade, the Hellhammer, the Storm Sword, the Shadow Sword, the Bane Sword, the Doom Hammer, the Bane Hammer, or the Storm Lord. They're all different variations. There's like, uh, there's, there's, I think, three different turret and cupola arrangements. There's like three or four different main cannons. And they, they're all variations, and you've got all the parts to make one of all of these. Or you could magnetize it and be able to make all of them if you wanted to, so you can swap all the parts out. Or you could just cobble together all kinds of bits and bobs and make your own. You could have the cannon from a shadow sword with the turret from a hellhammer. Oh, that's an idea, actually. Oh, <laughs> hey, you know, I tell you what, the hellhammer there with that little stubby gun, it kind of looks like a Panzer IV. But then you got the rest of the thing. Uh, you know, you could take the big cannon of a shadow sword, stick it onto a bane blade, like Chris did. He kind of cobbled together, uh, I think, a bit of that and a bit of that, and he mixed it all together. You could, you could have the fixed gun arrangement of the the stug like arrangement of the doom hammer, which is like a non rotating static turret, and then you, you got like a thing in the back for people to walk around, and you could put the big cannon on that. You could do whatever you want. You can do whatever you want. You can build it whatever you think looks good to you. Is, is correct. So I don't want you to ask me how to build it. How to, I don't want you to ask me what's correct, so rather. You can ask me how to build it. You should, mustn't ask me, I should I or can I? I don't want to hear can I. You absolutely can. You can build whatever the flip you want. If you want to build it and put wings on it, you can put wings on it. It's all gravy. It's for you to have fun with. Right. We have now built two track units. Yes. So you can start to see how big this thing is going to be. It's going to be about that wide. Sorry, sniffles. And it's going to come to about here. And then the front bit ends here. But you've got obviously the cannon at the front. It's going to be it's about a foot and a half long. It's meaty boy. And I've got some Aquila. If I if they fit, I could put some Aquilas on those drums. But I don't know if they'll fit. Mm. So there we go. That is our two track units for our Bane Blade. Uh, B3 have to sort T out later's gang says B3. Thank you very much for coming in, my friend. I wonder how difficult we've done that one. I'm so glad I've done that one. Uh, Mew says Rage, Hugs, Hearts. Well done, Fox. Good job, says Ray. Thank you very much, Ray. It's amazing when I actually get some work done, isn't it? Like normally that'd be like six streams. I know. I've got to clean up those. I thought I'd have to clean that nub up then, but it's actually sanded okay. It's fine. Uh, I just ordered you a little present for Christmas, buddy. I swear, I promise it's not going to hurt in any way, shape or form. Oh, thank you very much. But also, oh dear. That's going to be some hot chilli sauce in, isn't it? Paul got me some of that regret chilli uh, sauce about two years ago. I've probably had about like three millilitres of it over the course of the last two years. It's that strong. 
Right, so that's those two track units done. I can only hope and pray because I don't know. I can only hope and pray that when they actually go onto the tank proper with the floor, that the tracks are actually straight and not like that or like that. Or uh, for, uh, I can only hope that they actually lined up nicely because if they're not, eh, it's going to get interesting. We've all done that thing where you build a vehicle, you build a car and oh look, one of the wheels isn't on the ground. Let's get the glass plate out again just to make sure. Because there's nothing worse than that. Not that I can really tell, but it looks, yeah, it looks all right. I think we'll be fine. I think it'll be fine and dandy. Get away with it. Yeah, we've all done that thing where you build a car and there's like one wheel off the ground and you're like, oh. I did that on the SDKFZ 247 that I just did for remodels. One of the wheels, even though I was really careful, one of the wheels was raised up a little bit. So when I put it on the base, I'd make sure that wheel is on top of a tuft. Nobody will ever know. It's not chilly or heat oriented at all. It is a nice thing. Well, thank you very much. Sean Wiles just popped in to say goodbye. I just cut. No, I won't sing that. I've got itchy nose. I'm pitching nose. Thank you for coming in, Sean. Right, so we've done those. That's the two. Um, I was going to say pauldrons then. Pauldrons is completely the wrong word. Track units. Next week. What have we got next week? Uh, yes, thank you very much, uh, Raging Modeler. You are very, very kind. I look forward to uh, uh, not eat, doing anything with them until Christmas. Um, is it? Oh. Uh, I don't think I've actually got anything coming from Amazon or anywhere like that. So if I get a package, if you've ordered it from somewhere, I'll just have to assume it's yours because I won't know not to open it, you see. Done that one. Done that. Uh, done that. Done that. Done it, done it, done it, done it, done it. There you go, done. Yes, I like ticking things off. Next week, we have the floor unit of Harten. This is where it gets a bit tricky next week now because we've got to make this floor unit. Make sure it all lines up. So we'll be using the glass plate of level thinging again. In fact, I reckon next week we can have the entire body shelf done because after that, we're onto like the fiddly bits for the specific tank variants. Mm. Mm -mm. I don't think once that's done, there's like, I'm going to have four sponsors to make. I think they'll take a while. I don't think it's going to be that long a drawn out build. I've also got my uh, Deathcore Krieg resin tank crew to make as well, because this is going to be a Deathcore tank. So. It will be arriving tomorrow. Okay, cool beans. Thank you. I shall keep it. I'll quarantine it for a few days and then not touch it. It will sit in quarantine for like, Three days and then sit there till Christmas. So as long as it's not something that's going to go off and rot in about two days. <laughs> Do I have to wait till Christmas to open it is what I'm saying. Or is it going to go to rot and go stinky? That would not be a good thing. Uh, where are we up to? I think that's everything now. We're coming up to six o'clock. So that's perfect timing. Well done, Fox. I was going to say pat myself on the You can't pat yourself on the back. It's not how it works. I was going to... I don't know. I was going to slap my own hand, but that's a telling off, not a congratulating thing. I don't know. Anyway, there we go. That's them two done. Let's put that there so you can see the interesting side. All done. Next week, I say we'll crack on with the, the, the lower hull, the bits between these two. We'll see how much we can get done. Uh, don't forget, of course, I will be back tomorrow uh, with Chris, uh, Colin, and possibly Ted. We don't know. But possibly Ted. Somebody mentioned Ted might be back on. Uh, for tomorrow's eModels Monday live show, that'll be 9 p.m. tomorrow night on the eModels UK YouTube channel. So do make sure to go along and watch that. Don't forget, of course, tonight though, I'm finishing now. I don't think Dad's doing a, an in-between stream um, for the for a while. Uh, but don't forget, Chris will be here at 8 p.m. tonight. That's Chris over at Gross Models. He'll be here at 8 p.m. He is starting, I think, the painting on his uh, Atalan. Ridge Runner. I really have to not make myself say Matalan Fridge Raider. It's really hard work. Atala I, I can't believe when they named that, they didn't think Matalan and Fridge and Fridge Raider. <sighs> yeah, anyway. So Chris will be back on Gross Models channel at 8 p.m. tonight. So do make sure to go and watch that. I should hopefully be in the chat. I've got to go make the tea now. So hopefully I won't be stuck in making the tea while that's on. But I shall join the chat. Uh, and say so we'll be back on Monday for uh, eModels. And then hopefully, hopefully this week, 
I've been saying it for the last two or three weeks, but hopefully this week I'll be able to crack back on with the Lehman Russ. It's got dust on it now. It's been there so long. Crack back on with the Lehman Russ. Get that finished. The tabletop trauma center build because it's, it's only in, that's only base color paint. It's got so much to do on that yet. I've just got the base colors now. So got loads of work to do on that yet. So hopefully we'll get cracking on that this week and get i want to get this finished this week the lehman russ if i can so hopefully stay tuned we'll see how that comes out anyway uh and then of course i'll be hopefully this week all being well back on friday with uh, well back on tuesday with destiny uh, me and chris doing destiny all being well and then friday is obviously fallout the uh, saturday is skyrim saturday and sunday again warhammer sunday i was potentially thinking about doing a borderlands thing at some point but uh, i'd really need more than two of us to play so uh, I don't know if any of the other guys, and it needs to be regular, so it might not ever happen that. I know there's me and Chris. Paul might, I don't know if Paul be interested in playing it. He's finding a fourth or a third, you see. So it's quite tricky to, go, to be there guaranteed every week, but it would be cool. But we'll see. We'll see. Anyway, that's going to do me. I'll shut up now. I need to go for a great big week. So thank you to all of you who've been watching. Thank you very, very much. I will see you all tomorrow. I'll see you all in chat for Chris's stream later on. Um, thank you again to my patrons and my YouTube channel members. If you want to support the channel, you can become a patron at patreon.com forward slash model making guru, or you can become a channel member by pressing the YouTube button underneath, no, not the YouTube button, the join button underneath any one of my videos. Uh, both YouTube channel members and patrons keep this channel alive by paying the bills, keeping the lights on, putting food on my table. A massive thank you to them. Uh, or if you want to, you can, um, what was the other thing? No, there's something else. I, I was about to say super chat, but that's nonsense, isn't it? Uh, if you... Uh, hang on, wait, more coffee. Brain's not working. See what happens when I get out of the habit of streaming for a few days. Uh, yes, so you can, if you if you don't want to support me that way, you can just, of course, like and subscribe. And if you get a chance, make sure to watch the adverts on my videos. It really helps out the channel a lot and costs you nothing. Uh, but become a patron, become a channel member. Uh, channel members and patrons also get early access for a week advert free to a lot of my content. So it's always worth becoming a member. And you can guarantee this channel still exists and keeps continuing to exist. That entire section was just so badly worded. I need a script. I need a vacation. Uh, anyway, yeah. Don't go. For the oh, man. Clap it on. My brain is failing. Yes, don't forget, of course, check out my channel sponsors, emodels.co.uk and goblingaming.co.uk. Links in the description below the video. Use those links. It'll tell them that I sent you and I'll get some income. And of course, if you've got to buy stuff on Amazon, don't forget, I do have US, UK and Canada stores, Amazon stores. As an Amazon affiliate, I do earn from qualifying purchases. So if you use the links in the description below the video uh, to get your model making supplies, uh, it helps me earn a little bit of income. It doesn't cost you anything, but helps me earn a little bit of income extra. So do check them out. If there's something you want to buy and it's not in my store, drop me a message on Facebook or somewhere. Facebook's the best bet because I'm always on there. Drop me a message on Facebook and I can add it for you in seconds. Anyway, that's going to do. The, the wrap up's always the fiddly bit. It's the, it's the asking for money bit that us Brits are never good at. That's going to do us. Thank you very much for watching. Take care of yourselves. Don't forget, of course, go make something awesome. Paint light. Go be awesome. Just to make you know, by the way, these are in the same scale. That's how big a bane would compared to a Lehman Rust. Yeah, that's a person. Yeah. Uh, yeah, go make something awesome. Go be awesome. Uh, and don't forget, of course, if you are going, if you stay safe. Uh, if you're going out, worm ask. Worm ask. Uh, and I shall say, take care of yourselves. I'll see you next time. Amoebas. <laughs>